Looks like we got a new friend. Looks like we got a new friend! <sighs> Looks like we got a new friend! Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Mouse Guard featuring all of the wonderful people around me. Uh, before we get into things, first of all, thank you very much to Vino Lady. Jess, thank you for that raid. Uh, what a wonderful way to start a stream. Welcome, raiders. Um, guys, here are my social links. Uh, go and check them out. Uh, my Discord is a wonderful, inclusive, safe place where you can talk about D&D &D and other TTRPGs. If you send me a DM on Twitter, I will get you a game. Uh, it won't be this season anymore unless we have a load of dropouts because we've got a waiting list and it's full. But um, I'm soon to be recruiting for Christmas games and games in January. So um, send me DMs anyway and I'll get you games. I don't forget about you and if I don't reply, that's a good thing. But, uh, if, it, if it doesn't say, if the tick doesn't go blue, trust me, that's a good thing. If the tick doesn't go blue, that means you're still light grey on my message list, so I know to look at you. Um, <laughs> it, it's not the best system in the world, but it works. Uh, and YouTube, you can catch up with this and all the other series over on YouTube there. We are full time, thank you very much for your support. Um, it's been amazing. Um, you can see our progress on the bar at the bottom, uh, modelled today by the wonderful Animus for us. Uh, thank you very much, Eris, for um, for uh, looking after our monthly cost goal down there. Um, we also have a Patreon uh, where you can support us, uh, but you should head over anyway because we also do free articles. We're looking to put out free a month at the moment. Uh, the latest one was by Derek on um, prep versus no prep uh, roleplay uh, DMing styles and uh, how improv is a part of both styles. So. It's cool. Uh, no, Zero, you got in just at the beginning. Welcome. Um, what else have we got? We've got merchandise. Go and check that out. Get that wonderful, uh, they're actually really handy notebooks, uh, as well as the wonderful logo in your life all over the place. I actually genuinely do use them. They are genuinely good. Um, we also have two sponsors. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's literally the perfect size for a three hour one shot. Like literally perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Having a nice notebook is always good, which reminds me I should go grab mine. Wow, the green screen is something really weird to that on OBS. Don't know if it's the same on that, but like the it yeah, looks like, it's it looks, like the corners of your green screen. You don't have like even lighting, I think. On yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But we're only looking at the middle on OBS. I, mean, <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know how to configure Zoom. I don't even know. Uh, Zoom's a mystery <laughs> to me. Um, what else have we got? We've got Bird in the Storm Publishing, who are our sponsors. Uh, their merch and mugs are both. Uh, the proceeds go directly to charity, and in January they'll be bringing us some new content uh, for between shows. Um, we also have a sponsor in Mage Hand Press. Uh, on Thursday at 1 p.m. EST, we run our D and D 5e space reskin called Dark Matter. If that sounds like something that floats your boat, check out the free page review and the uh, pre-order material in uh, those links there. Yes, yeah. Oh, that is a chunky notebook. That looks great, like. 
Oh, yeah, I like the spi- I like spiral notebooks, so I'm glad that yours is like a spiral notebook because yeah, my, sometimes my, you yeah. want to write on the other side of a page and like having being able to flip it is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like mine's, mine's a little one compared to yours, but they are. If you buy two, you get a 10% discount, and at the moment, using a certain code, you can get a 20% discount on Redbubble. I know that because they emailed me a couple of hours ago saying, "Hey, 20% discount." Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Uh, let's see if I can remember the mouse tweet. Is this the mouse tweet? That is the mouse tweet. Uh, every 10 retweets, we get a random assigned fate point. Please ahead, go ahead over and retweet. Spread the word every 10 we get things so uh, you can influence the game. In fact, we are already at nine. Already at nine retweets as I hand over the stream to our wonderful DM, Game Master, and Maustro. We just need one more. Just one. <laughs> Please. It was so cool. Please. Please, uh, just one more retweet. All right. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, I'm Eric, and I'm your I'm your Maestro today. Uh, thank you, Scrat. Uh, thank you, Chat. And um, yeah, we're playing. Uh, so we're moving. We're moving from summer. Uh, now we're getting into the fall of up for the territories, and we're, because uh, Halloween was just uh, you know scared. just last week, we're doing a little bit of a spooky story today. Um, the the title of today's mission is the Weasel Prince's Revenge. And uh, before we get into what that is and what that's all about, um, how about we do quickly do a um, remind everyone else who's playing here who our characters are, maybe a little bit what their belief is, and then um, decide amongst the three of you who wants to do the prologue that I previously on the last session. For our beliefs and stuff, should we wait until we know what the mission is? Uh, no, you can. We can settle what their goal is afterwards. But that, just character. Uh, you know, oh, uh, in instinct. rank for color. Yeah, believe. Yeah, believe in instinct is fine right now. Okay, uh, I'll kick us off. Um, I sure. am playing uh, Brandon, who is a bald mouse. He's an old mouse. He's probably pretty close to retirement. Retirement. He's close to retirement. Um, yeah, he he doesn't do so well at making friends or doing things so right or stuff. He tends to get sick a lot and stuff. Though last week. He did stop himself from being sick. He is now a healthy mouse. He's he's healthy and wealthy. For the and... first time in seven episodes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little Timmy has tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And it turns out all I needed to do at the end of the day was just sharpen little Timmy's swords and suddenly I felt better. Um, he held to the following health. He... He... <laughs> he holds to the, uh, these two beliefs. Uh, he believes that oaths are not to be taken lightly. Every guard must embody the oath to the best of ability. Sometimes you must perform unsavory acts to serve the greatest good. And also, he believes that some people just can't be dealt with. They are just too stubborn or spiteful, which may be slightly hypocritical. But hey, there you go. And the second one will be the one that I am playing today as like my active belief or like mechanic things. Um, his cloak is black and his speciality is survival. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so much, Scrap. Thank you, Brandon. Who wants to go next? Go ahead, Eris. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am playing Edme or Eddie, uh, who is a very young and slightly naive gray mouse with a yellow cloak. Um, she is an apiarist. She has a bee named Millie, and her specialty is weather watching. Um, and my belief uh, is when it's worth helping, then everyone can do some small part to help. Um, and my instinct is I will make myself useful to my patrol. All right, Perfect. I guess that leaves me. Uh, I am going to be playing Little Timmy. And uh, Little Timmy is a tiny pygmy brown mouse um, with little white splotches of fur and he's missing like bouts of fur around him. He's kind of like a matted and ugly fur. And the parts that are missing look like someone maybe burnt that parts off. He's also missing one of his ears. And um, he wears a giant oversized cloak, gray cloak that looks like it probably belongs to somebody else or did at one point. Um, his specialty is fighter. And he finally got to show that off a little bit last episode. Um, I don't know if it's for the right reasons or not, but we'll find out how, what that cause, what drama that caused later, I suppose. Um, and his beliefs are that everyone should do what every, whatever they must to survive. And his instincts are to always cook a delicious 
or always cook delicious things in his free time. Um, he's also got like a bunch of pouches with random cooking supplies that kind of look like a mess, but he knows where everything is. And he carries two weasel knives at his sides. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Great, great, great. Cool. Uh, then let's get ready to do the, the prologue now. Um, now that we've introduced our characters, uh, this is a mechanical part of the game. Um, each session, uh, one of the players, the player who did not do it last week, can step up and um, try to recover a condition for, for free uh, or recover a spent point of nature by saying what happened last session. And if we all agreed it was a good job, they get that sweet little mechanical bonus. And I think Brandon did it last time, right? I did. I did. Hence yeah, me not being no sick or anything else. Or are you missing any nature errors? I am hungry slash thirsty and I am missing nature, so both. Yeah, so maybe you should go. <laughs> okay, let's see how much I can remember. So last week we started having just located the the ship of the pirate uh, Hammond, um, who supposedly wielded the fang of a, a large snake uh, as her sword. And we were rather surprised to find that the ship was apparently sinking. Um, we were planning on maybe fighting them, we weren't sure yet, uh, but uh, instead we ended up rescuing them and we kind of made a deal with Hammond that uh, we would get her a private meeting with, I'm gonna forget what his name is. Um, Vega. Vega, who is a member of the council. Um, and in exchange, she would tell us who she was working for. So, uh, having got back into port, we argued for a while what to do, and um, Rockford and Little Timmy ended up deciding to break into Vega's office and leave him a note where they discovered Eddie's friend uh, Kendrick, and I also don't remember <laughs> what's his face's name, uh, and his fellow patrol member basically there to threaten Vega into cooperating. Oh, Jaxper. Jaxper, yes. I am too forgetting it for some reason. Um, to it's okay, I probably would too. I just take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I'm bad at that. Uh, so they end up agreeing to set up this secret meeting, but the secret meeting turns into a fight and then we accidentally install the puppet government basically. Uh, so uh, Hammond ends up on the council uh, having assured us that she knows who her friends are, AKA the guard. Um, and then Eddie had a big fight with Kendrick and they're no longer friends, but she did convince him to take the fall <laughs> for everything that happened. So pros, cons. Uh, I don't know which one's the better option there. <laughs> good with the bad, bad with the good. But you can, um, you can mend your relationship. You probably have to spend a full, whatever your full turn on it. What, are, what do they call them? Players' turns? Checks? Yeah, players' turns, yeah. Check. I don't know if they ha that had a name specifically other than players' mm. turn. Yeah, I think they're just called checks. Oh, a check. Okay. You, you can spend your players' check to mend your relationship. All right. So I think we're ready to begin today. Um, this is the sort of synopsis for today's mission, everybody. It's fall in the mouse it's territory. Scary. You just start with it's fall. I'm already afraid. Because <laughs> I imagine mice yeah. like trying to gather food before winter. And I'm like, that just sounds horrifying. That's, that's exactly what's going on. It's fall in the mouse territories and it's been an unusually long heat wave. Legends from the weasel wars so many decades ago spoke of a mighty weasel prince who once held a bastion by what is now the town of Appleloft. But in a raid during a long Indian summer, just like now, they were slain. As the weasel prince lay dying, he cursed the mice that brought forth his end and the blackberry fields that surrounded the warren now to be his tomb. The guard, honorable as they are, are said to not have touched the princely fortune inside and sealed the entrance once and for all. Locals, were ordered to never approach this place or the blackberries to this day. Stories of harvesters spotting glimpses of a ghostly weasel prince patrolling the lands near this blackberry bush are shared among the spice ciders in Apple Loft's tavern 
the golden leaf. But this fall, during the peak harvesting time of the year, the mugs of cider are not flowing and the apples that they love to harvest so much are bug food in the fields around the town. No harvester dares leaves their home in Apple Loft after a string of eerie disappearances. Whispers that the pale prince has taken the mice. It's the curse, they cry. And since the disappearances, Apple Loft teeters on the brink of panic. They need the apples for winter, but no one will harvest until this curse of the weasel prince is lifted. So you've been ordered to come to Apple Loft, rid them of their ghost, and save the harvest. Oh. Welcome to Mouse Guard. All Ooh. right. So, uh, just so I have this, the Weasel Prince supposedly cursed the mice and the and the area where there's a blackberry bush. Yeah. Okay. Apparently. And then yeah. what's the, with the sealed entrance? Yeah. Um, legend has it that the Weasel Warren or like the Dark Heather entrance to where this uh, prince once held court and stuff with his princely treasures was a entrance near a blackberry bush. Um, somewhere to the south of Apple Loft. Okay, so it gotcha. All right. So there's an entrance that was near the blackberry bush that was yep. sealed. And it's mm -hmm. unsealed now? Or we don't ostensibly, know. Ostensibly we so. For so, the curse this year. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, so let's uh do you want to talk about what our goal should be today? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've got a feeling that I want to hear what Brandon's new new goal is going to be. <laughs> well, Brandon's lived far too long to to believe in ghost stories and stuff, so his goal is going to be to prove that it's all phooey. Okay. What's yeah. your goal? Prove that the ghosts aren't real. Prove that it's prove someone. Prove that the ghosts aren't real. What if they are real? <laughs> uh, I have lived too long. But I guess I'll fail. <laughs> <laughs> True. I think that Timmy's goal is going to be to help Apple Loft restore their harvest. Basically, get back to like harvesting. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'm so bad at this. Uh, can I make, I think I'm gonna make mine uh, reassure the mice of Apple Loft that everything will turn out okay. That's a fantastic goal. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, and in fact, speaking of that goal, uh, that leads us into sort of like where the we turn the page from the title page with a nice sweet cover art. Um, and we see Apple Loft locked in fear. Uh, you arrive in the town of Apple Loft to prepare your investigation, but the town is absolutely choked in fear. Although, um, although these uh, attacks by you know this this ghost, these disappearances uh, occurred only in the harvesting fields. They still think they're doomed and they're just going to get plucked from their house at any moment. Uh, for those who don't know, Apple Loft is a town in the south southern parts of the territories. It's near a bunch of apple trees. The apples fall, they collect them, and, and so it goes. Um, however, here in Apple Loft, not even the inn. What place is Apple Loft the closest to on the map? Uh, so the south, it's kind of close to Dory Gift, Gillib Pledge. Okay. Um, yeah. I can switch over to the map if we want to see on the stream. Yeah, do that real quick. Uh, I marked where the party is. This is kind of near near the town in the south here. Do that Ooh, real quick. Okay, I see it now. For people's uh, edi own edification. If they want to play at home, along, you know, at home, <laughs> get some cool references here. 
Yeah. So as I was saying, um, you arrive at a town that feels desolate. All of the windows are shut. The all the blinds and everything have been pulled closed. Uh, you see maybe like you know a couple eyes from behind these curtains. Uh, you know, get a, a glimpse of you before quickly closing them again. Uh, the inn itself is closed. You can see the bartender um, kind of putting up the last bits of the chairs here because nobody's come in. Uh, the sign has never been even turned to open. Uh, everything here just looks like everything is just ground to a halt as everybody just sort of stays in their home, terrified, gripped by this fear of this ghost. Uh, one of you is either going to have to try to rally the town or... Um, Drudge up a good old friend or contact to to get you here, um, you know. Or, or so we're or not in else. Apple Loft yet, or are we just? No, you're it? in. You're in here. Okay. You're in here. Imagine this world like if this was a Western, like you just arrived through the the town, right? You just and it's kind of like a ghost town because everyone's yeah. hiding. Okay, exactly. we do a little RP then. Absolutely. Okay, so yeah, as we're walking in, I guess because Timmy's always very loud and talkative, uh, <laughs> Timmy will immediately be like, "Where's everyone at?" A fallen apple leaf does a little tumbleweed thing through this. He tries to catch it. Yeah. Yeah, Everyone should be out here collecting. If I lick the apple leaf, what does it taste like? Apple leaf. Oh, this tastes tasty. He's going to scroll it up and put it in his bag for later. Also, Mm -hmm. Maestro, we have hit 10 retweets and also hit 10 followers for the day. So we get two random assigned fate points. Ooh. Happy day. Well, you will be one, Eris is two, and Margaret is three. So I'll roll 2d3. See what happens. Okay. <laughs> Go to Eris. Eris, I think you got the last one too. She's just racking them up. Fate Dang. points are awesome too. Persona is a little harder to use, I feel like. Yeah, because you need that wise to unlock it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's it's kind of, you know... Yeah. Do can we learn more wises? You can. Um, how is you that cheat. assigned by like the DM basically usually? There's two. Uh, there's two ways of learning wises. Uh, the first way you learn a wise is the just through play. Um, at the end of what's called the winter phase of the game, everyone talks about stuff. And there's a chance to get a new wise. Oh, um, okay. The second thing you can do is through play, uh, which is harder to do. You must fulfill. The four checks of your your whys. One of them is using your whys that help somebody succeed, using your whys that um, they still fail, um, using your whys to spend a fate point of the, of course, you spend a fate point on it, and then you use your whys to spend a persona point on it. Once you've done all four of those things, you have two options. You can either uh, mark a check for advancement of any skill that seems relevant to your whys that you've used in your past from it, um, and then just write it fresh again and do it again, or you can just rewrite the wise into something new. Okay, so that's what those, those four check marks are next to the wises. Mm. Correct. Cool. Okay. All right. Yep. So Ghost Town. Yeah. Ghost Town. And Apple now you Law. all know too. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, so you don't Timmy just to, yeah. says that. He's like, where's everyone at? And he grabs the leaf, licks it, and is like, that tastes good. <laughs> Rolls it up and sticks it in his bag. Sure, people should be out here harvesting. Hello? Well, I guess if the rumors are true, they're that afraid. Maybe there is a ghost around here. Oh, that's all fooey, Timmy. It's How probably, do you know? It's probably some brigand using old tales to, to take advantage of people. Probably some bands collecting up all the harvest or something. I don't then how s- do you explain the missing mice? Well, you gotta make it believable. What do you do with the missing mice to make it unbelievable? I don't know. Maybe you make them join your band. Maybe you keep them prisoner. Could be any number of things. Well, all of that sounds horrible. Either way, we need to stop it. And these mice need to harvest. If they don't, I mean, hiding in their houses, they might just die anyway because they don't have enough harvest for the winter. Also, thank you very much to A. Kelly Lane, uh, who donates so that uh, both Eddie and Timmy get re- re-rolls. Aw. Oh, snap. Those are the best. Thank you. Yeah, we are we are down our Rockford, so all of this help is going to go yeah. along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three mice thank is so hard. Thank you for your generosity. 
Well, they've got to be holed up somewhere. Is there a mayor's house or governor's house here? Maybe we can knock on their place first. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was a mouse, I'd probably hide in the tavern if there is one. Yeah. Okay. I don't mind going to a tavern. I know there's a place here. I think it's called the Golden Leaf. Not a tavern, but maybe an inn. Might have a tavern next to it, though. Mm. They're often connected. Uh, you make your way t over there, and um, you see that the door is is closed with a big old like sign that says "closed until further notice." Well, um, you, you can peer through the windows, you know, with through the slivers of some of the drapes, and you can see that there is somebody there uh, working, uh, kind of putting away, uh, you know, some some moving some chairs around and and putting them up and kind of doing that that place not you know just keeping the cobwebs off stuff, but. Yeah, yes, Timmy slides like uh, he takes a pan, like a pot, out of his bag and puts it down and then stands on it because he's really tiny. And then yeah. he like peeks through the window and he's like, I see someone in there. They're sweeping. Maybe there's, so if we can talk to them. He looks back at the, at Brandon and Eddie. Well, let's knock on the door. And and Brandon will. You, you get a a gruntled, um, more like a grizzled uh, female mouse voice uh, saying, "Can't you read? We're closed." Yep, I read it. He picks up the pan and the pot and puts it, tries to shove it back in his bag. Well, then what's the problem? So, you don't want no curses coming in this house. Golden Leaf has been curse-free since my mama ran this place, and it's going to be curse-free for me, too. So, thank you, thank you kindly. Kind of look back at the other two. <laughs> no, 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 and you just hear that sort of grumbling, like, no curses in my place, you know? <laughs> Golden Leaf is, has a reputation. <laughs> like, it's just... yeah. They're going to need, uh, they're, it's going to take some convincing. You could tell them the mouse guard is here to help. No, no, no. I don't think bringing the mouse guard up. So don't you worry. I, I may not know much, but I know a thing or two about wooing the ladies. I'll, uh, I'll use my charms on her. Are you gonna sneak I've into her good. door? <laughs> Are you gonna sneak into her window? No, 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 no. That, that... But that's what you said you do to woo the ladies. That's what young mices do to woo the ladies. That's just. Uh... So I there's sneaking... differences in age? What do I do when I'm old? You'd have to figure that out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. But you start off by sneaking out of windows in the early morning. I know that's how you start. Okay. Questionable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's just like, okay. Wait, how old is Eddie? Because I think we might be similar. Eddie's Eddie's 18. Okay, uh, he's 22, so Timmy's young too. A little okay. bit older. Yeah, a little older. It's funny. So, right. uh, uh, what does yeah. this look like? <laughs> I don't know what, he's gonna woo the ladies, apparently. So I'm, wait, uh, I'm really, waiting to so find I, out what that looks like. Turn to Timmy first, I'm gonna be like, Timmy, Timmy you, you, said that, uh, you said that you knew of this place. Do they have a specialty dish or something like that? Do I know if they have a specialty dish? <laughs> if anyone's gonna uh, know, it's gonna be you, Timmy. <laughs> I mean, you know that this place is good, home to good cider, the best cider in all the territories. Ooh, okay. Well, I don't know about a dish, more like a glass or a cup. They're known for their cider. I mean, it is apple, you know, loft yeah, after all. Yes, of course, of course, okay, well. You know the apple part? Step back, you, you two listen to this, okay? <clears throat> <laughs> Jimmy like steps yeah. back, like gives him a, oh, you're a serenade, right? And like Eddie and oh, him God. are like, both looking over, like what's gonna happen? I, I, yeah. Ooh, ooh! Actually, I pull off a piece of the leaf and I hand a piece to Eddie to eat, <laughs> so we can eat while we're watching. It's like our popcorn. Yeah. Now, now, good, good lady, I, uh, I've traveled far to visit this place, the Golden Leaf. I've heard they. I've heard that they have the most uh, amazing landlord with the most beautiful countenance and the best cider that your that your that your tongue could ever be pleasured to, to to be graced with. Okay. 
Um, so are you trying? This sounds like you're manipulating them if you're yes. trying to woo them in. Yes, indeed. All right. I have points of manipulator. Oh, yeah. nice. So do I. <laughs> do it up. So I can, I, I don't know if I can assist in that. Uh, you can, but how are you assisting in the wooing? Didn't you already? <laughs> you gave me the side of tip. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, oh, yeah. Timmy, okay. Timmy will be eating the leaf and um, he stops for a moment and adds in, uh, he's like, and he means it. I've heard tales of the apple cider way across all the way to Wolf Point. That's where I'm from, Wolf Point. Yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Timmy. Don't, don't, don't show me up. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Eris, is Eddie helping at all? Uh, I can't think of a good way. Eddie's like, I, I don't know anything about wooing ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't, can't you use your apiarist? Because of the birds and the bees? <laughs> <laughs> just send Millie in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was awful. <laughs> um, that was awful, my love. Do you have cook or anything like that? What do you have for your skills? I have... Orator, <laughs> weather watcher, haggler, <laughs> armor, apiarist. Not anything really useful. Yeah, I don't know if you have something useful for this, looking at yeah, it. To help somebody s kind of seduce or, or flirt with somebody is. It's yeah, hard. Your yeah. Are, yeah, your skills are kind of limited. Right. And. Uh, I've got a feeling it's one of them too many cooks things as well. Like you can have a wingman, but once you get to two wingmen, it gets a bit weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, don't, no. I like right. the way that I did it. And then you're just, cause I was trying to nudge the wolf point thing, but then you're like, that's where I'm from. I'm like, duh. <laughs> 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 right. Love it. All right. Uh, so I'm going to be rolling five dice here because oh, um, I'm an evil. Her, her will is three, but I'm giving them plus two dice because of the curse around and I'm just an evil game master okay that's fine um none of my traits are gonna help me in this um i have <laughs> i have i'm like wait i like want to look at your sheet and see what your traits are again because yeah none of those are gonna yeah, no. uh, i have two in manipulator Can you tell the audience what they are oh yeah certainly so uh, my traits are that i'm cautious i'm level two cautious uh, I've got, uh, I'm also tough, and one of my traits got turned into more of a deficit than a trait. I'm stubborn. <laughs> so. Uh, not really helpful. I mean, I guess stubbornness could, maybe, if you could dress it up as perseverance by some serious manipulation, but no. Um, stubborn would be like, you won't take no for an answer type of thing, but yeah, consent. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I guess manipulator. I've got two. I've got one from Timmy. Uh, it looks a lot like I'm rolling free dice because I don't want to use any nature on this. I don't think. <laughs> but I've got a ton of fate points. You just hope that two. Yeah, if you roll some crits, you could re-roll. Yeah. And what are your wises? Uh oh, oh I know tons about beetles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe. Does she happen to have a beetle on her? On her? No. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess that'll be um, free dice, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. First, my five. Man, but do it's you okay. Use your persona a lot. I saw that you don't have that much persona. Yeah. If you have, if you have, a, yeah, you can use your persona oh, yeah. add an extra die, one for one for that, or tap your nature. Uh, I used a lot of my persona last time, actually. Yeah, I just was looking. At, I saw yeah. that you used so much. I'm like, I have never used any of. I have so much persona. Yeah, I used it to um <laughs> gain like free lots of free dice last time for something difficult. Um, nice. Yeah, I don't think I, I think I'm gonna leave my one persona point sitting there. Like I say, you know, it'd be cool if this works, but I also think it'd be really cool narratively if it fails. Like, if just you do, yeah, if you fail, sure. yeah, <laughs> just because you know, it failed last time you tried hitting on a lady. Exactly. I'm, like, I'd like no. to think I'm giving a good role model to uh, Timmy and Eddie. You know. Oh my God, Timmy's gonna have. Oh, my I'm so sorry. Oh my oh. God. Oh. <laughs> okay, come on. Do GMs dice like explode? Because you got two. No, they don't. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. <gasps> got one. I've got two successes, but I've got one that explodes. Okay. Two. Oh, let's go. I'm Come gonna, on. I'm going to burn that fate point. It? Here we need, we need one. So you're going to reroll three. I need, well, I need three, but I'm only going to reroll one. Uh, yeah, you I have a reroll. Oh, you rerolled. So, so well, you're you spending your reroll. Right? Oh, yeah. So, what? Hang on a minute. What? 
Don't you have a reroll? Uh, I don't have a reroll. Or... No, Timmy and no. Eddie got oh. donated rerolls. Um, but you I, got you you have I an exploding can... six, so you can explode that, and then you also, if you use a fate, you can reroll again. So that's two. Uh, no. Don't I have to spend the no. fate to reroll a six? You're spending one fate right now to open that six. Yeah. 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 Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Now, are you doing... So So here's a good, like, tactical mouse guard thing about, like, a thing about the game, right? If oh, you're, you know if you're you're not wanting to use beetle wise here to re-roll the failure, you might be better off rolling that wise first, because if you could re-roll a die and get a six, then there's a chance you could roll two dice, you know, instead of that one. How can he use his beetle wise here? That's not my problem. Oh, okay. Get creative, <laughs> get creative Scrat. Okay, um... Do you know what? Hell, I haven't been able to use beetles for seven episodes, so I might just narratively just like, can I just like look on the ground and find a beautiful shiny beetle and just be like, I've bought a gift. Like <laughs> yeah, beetles are pretty big. That's yeah. the, beetles, beetles are, are the we size can, of a dog. We can you ride just beetles. <laughs> you just pick, here's, imagine just here's picking an idea up a dog. Right I've got Brandon. a puppy. <laughs> Brandon. Beetles are used for harvesting and stuff like that. You could probably somehow yeah. bring that in. I don't know, but that's on you to be creative on that front. But there are plenty yeah. of beetles. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I mean, like uh, the size of dogs. The only thing I can think of is pick picking up a young one and assuming that mice have the same attachment to beetles that we have to dogs, and just like sort of like holding the the, the puppy essentially in my arms, like. I'll allow it. I allow oh the desperation. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the guys at the park who just have a dog because yeah. they, they want to pick up the ladies. Up, yeah, they get the ladies. Okay, okay, so I, Try I'm it. Not going to explode one. this one. This is just a you know, I like, one. I used to see the same. You're like, you're not saying no to me. You're saying no to these eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Well, no. the one got rerolled to a one. Okay. All right, yeah. Aww. All right, Jesus turns, turns you down. Yep. But you can still spend a fate to roll that six. Yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Explode the six. No. 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 Uh, it's an I epic fail. <laughs> Basically, I pick up a really ugly beetle. Uh, <laughs> my like yeah. words Aww. are falling on deaf ears. She probably hates beetles. Mm -hmm. um, like one of its wings is like broken and it's like, it's, like messed up. That's just okay. sad. It is. Hey, it man. Is very sad. It can't be used for harvesting. That's why it's not as appealing. Um. See. I clearly like missing limbs. I don't know why. <laughs> like that's the first thing I go to. I'm like, I'm missing an ear. It's missing half of its wing. <laughs> we have a homebrew. homebrew you have rule. a brand. We have a homebrew rule in our Curse of Strahd game where if you get a um, if you get a failed death save, you take away a wound. Um, and every time you get five failed death saves, you lose something. So it's got to be at least a finger. Or a toe or something. And once you start running yeah. out of them, you just get worse and worse and worse. And so it starts hampering your play. Anyway, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like every time you, if you, because I've done that before where like if you get three death saves, you don't die, but you you have like a scar that's with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, every But if you death. die like X amount of times, then you're like dead, dead. Yeah. I, no, no, I inadvertently, I inadvertently ran D&D &D for like a year, not knowing that death saves reset when you're brought back to one. I thought you had to take a long rest. So like everyone's freaking out when they're on two. <laughs> like, oh, no. That sounds awesome. Yeah. No, we, we play that you still die if you fail three death saves, but every death save that you fail, you get a wound. So if you have like two and then you get resurrected, you gain two wounds. Yeah, until you get that five and you get that that yeah. scar. Yeah, that, yeah. That's awesome. I like it, cool. I like it. Um, all right, uh, Brandon, uh, let me ask you this question. <laughs> Who would be the? Who would you absolutely not want to see in this town? Oh God. Um, well, first of the list. I mean, unless she came with us, I doubt she's here. But Suzanne, that didn't go well. Right. Um, next up, I guess would be uh, probably again. My apprentice was just in the last town, so I doubt he's come along. Jaxper. Uh, and there was another person called Daryl the Sneck, and I can't remember who he was. Uh, Sounds like a, an actual snake. I don't know. I've put like <laughs> my like so I've put each name in my enemies box with like a brackets to remind me of who they are. Oh, so yeah. I've got Jaxper, my apprentice, Suzanne, uh, childhood flame, and Daryl. I've just put snake. 
<laughs> he spelled uh, his name it... like Snack and Tune. Oh, is Daryl is Daryl from the Dawnflowers? No. Okay. Oh. Wasn't he one of the early people that we encountered? Yeah, the Dawn Daryl Flowers. might be because yeah, the Dawnflowers is like uh, let's see, I can check the names. The rival, the rival. Bengrot group. was the snake. And Daryl yeah. was the one who died. So Daryl's definitely not there because he's dead. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Is uh, the enemy the snake that killed Daryl? Is that why yes, it's written that Feng way? Rot. Yeah. Maybe you meant to put Fangrot. But Daryl's Daryl's Dawn flowers are our enemy. Yeah. Because they're the they... group of mouse guards that hate you. Yeah. Because you got yeah. Because we tried to get them to stop. Uh, we tried to get Daryl to stop, but he still ran after the snake, and the snake killed him. Yeah. So the two, his two young Dawnflower people that were part of his group, part of his patrol, hate us. I don't know their. We don't know their names because we never asked their names. They just ran off. Um, well, they were, they were wearing red <laughs> jumpers. Taren, so. They're it's Taryn and Ada. Taryn and Ada. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna Taren. write. Down. That's probably on me that I never wrote it or Ada. gave them to you. So T A R Y N, E D A. Like that. Okay. I did not spell them like that. So I told, I spelled them very different. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> not even right. close. Well, no. Uh, okay. I, I'm taking the answer and it's definitely Suzanne. Um, oh, so Suzanne. Yes. Uh, she's like, so, you hit not enough, lady. <laughs> oh, God. No. Yes. Well, yes. But are you trying to hit on my wife? Oh, snap. Behind you is Suzanne, here oh, for the festivities and here to see her wife, uh, the, the the owner and proprietor of the Golden Leaf. And here you three are. And she says, of all the cider joints, of all the territories, you three. And I, I've, I've got to, he thinks he's a bard. He's going to turn around and be like, Suzanne, it's so good to see you. Yes, it's yes. Your wonderful wife and you. Oh, I can't wait to catch up properly. We didn't really inside the... get a chance to <laughs> put him back. From inside the bar, says, "Don't you sweet talk my wife back at me? Well, you were trying to flirt with me. You... <laughs> Damn it! Like, like he's yeah. trying to woo both and just getting sandwiched in the middle. <laughs> so it's not great." Um, <laughs> so you're going to try to, so, uh, <laughs> she's here. Um, she sees the three of you and, uh, she's a little bit confused about what's going on. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, I guess as no. this is all happening, Timmy like finishes the last bit of leaf. Like yeah. he's been eating it so fast. Cause like popcorn watching what just went down. Uh, and Timmy like kind of walks forward, like looks at Eddie and is like, shrugs and then steps forward and is like um sorry to uh break this up but um we're here to try to figure out what's going on why is no one harvesting yeah you said it kiddo those fields out there are, are deader than brandon's love life timmy like tries to hold back a laugh <laughs> and then he's like uh, um but why? <laughs> because I'm old and I never... Oh, no, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I was talking about the fields. Uh, yeah. Um, from inside, the proprietor, who haven't gotten their name yet, um, she says, it's because of the curse. Now, I'm not opening this door for nobody except Suzanne. So you, all, you all need to scatter. Well... Could you at least tell us where everyone is? Everyone's it. Look around. Everyone's in their houses, being safe. What are you doing? Just pestering me, trying to get this ghost to show up here, take me away with my wife. Ma'am, what's nope. your name? And also, we're not here to do any cursing. I mean, look at us. Do we look like we're capable of cursing someone? I don't know. Brandon's doing some cursing under his breath right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's, he's trying Maybe to you're not helping. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> hooey, hooey, ghost. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so that's what uh, Timmy says. Right. Um, no, they, they, they. I think they kind of know that you're, you're, you're here for good reasons, but they are, they are spooked. Um, yeah. Because Suzanne is here, though, um, I think she's going to be a little bit helpful. So she okay. opens the door and she says, "All right, if we help you, you leave. Will you leave me and my wife alone?" Um. <laughs> Scout's Please. honor. Guard's honor. And he like he like holds on to his like guard emblem that's clasping Go. his cloak. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, Go pester. Go pester uh Falker. Falker? Who's that? He's three houses down. Okay. Why why would he know something? Or her? She them? He. Well, he's the one who saw the ghost and is the only one who survived any attacks. Okay, that's helpful. Um, but I would say that people need to start harvesting. Winter's coming. Very important. We'll take our chance with winter rather than with this ghost. Now... Now I told you what you need to know. So 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 scoot scoot off my porch now, please. Please. All right. Fair it was fair. nice Thank meeting you. you. He waves and Timmy waves around Suzanne and then says, Nice to see you again, Suzanne. Did she climb through your window? <sighs> she um puts on a fake smile, being like, bye. Like I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She hate us too. Yeah. Yes, of course. She helped yes. us. I think Timmy convinced her to help us last time. I know, but she's upset about Brandon, and and you're all just guilty by association right now. True. All right. Okay. This this is an area of effect. Hate. It's like it's a gaze. <laughs> it's, a it it's guilty by association. I got you. So. Yeah. As we walk away, I'm gonna be saying to. I mean, why didn't you warn me that somebody was coming? And, you know, you, you gotta you gotta warn me if I'm wooing and somebody's somebody's coming along and and disrupting I things. I didn't see her. She was like a ninja. Maybe that's why she like they like each other climbing in the windows. Maybe they didn't get caught. Well, uh, to be honest, have the fun when you're young's getting caught. Anyway, it's beside the point. It would have gone better if she wasn't already married. Yeah, I would have hoped so. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, that's uh zero to two now, Brandon. Let's go. Yeah. Three doors down, they said. <laughs> we didn't ask if it was on the left or the right. That's true, but we could try both directions, maybe. You you turn the page of the comic book and you uh, you are you're all welcome inside a small nice little apartment in Apple Loft. Um, it is not Falker's apartment. It is his friend Nolan who's taking care of Falker. Noah or Noel? Uh, Nolan. Nolan. Okay. Uh, N O E L A N. Uh, Nolan is taking care of his friend. Um. So you kind of inside, he takes you into a nice little like tea room, right? Uh, Folker is there, but Folker um, maybe was a brown haired mouse, but at this point he looks like he's been um, just just like he's seen a ghost. He, his, his face right now is, is just totally like his eyes are super wide. I just got that like little bit of a jitter from adrenaline. Um, he's, he's currently in a nice recliner uh, covered in nice, uh, well-knitted blankets. Um, you can kind of see around here that Nolan's quite the knitter, quite the weaver. Uh, Nolan has been, um, a lot of the things around here are, are knit uh, by him in various different patterns and, and stuff. It, it's a very nice uh, little place. Uh, Nolan, Nolan is uh, offering and pouring Falker some tea right now. And, uh, Falker doesn't really even like look at him. He looks kind of, um, not, not, I don't want to use, it's not comatose, copacetic, is that the word? Uh, it's kind of just staring off a little bit. Uh, got that thousand yard stare kind of situation. And um, so you're you're really mostly just right now, you know, if this was a Law & Order SVU episode, you're talking to to Nolan. 
as he's like pouring them the tea. Uh, it's like, yeah, Fal Falker's really has been through a lot, but um, let me know if there's anything I could do for it for for you all and and you you help in the town. Uh, Apple often, you know, we we certainly appreciate it. He like puts a hand on um Falker's shoulder. Well, did he tell you what he saw at all? Uh, to tell you the truth, I tried, but Falker's uh he's pretty tight lipped about everything and doesn't really want to get into it. He's hasn't been the same since. Well, we're here to try to fix the problem. I guess the thing is we need to know where the problem is and kind of what it is, so we have some type of expectation. Otherwise, we're going in like blind mice. That's not good. Believe me. It's the way no he good. says it, yeah. The way he says it, it was picking apples, and uh, him and him and his friend. Uh, he said uh, a fellow harvester, um, who the first one to go to go missing, uh, a mouse by the name of Clarence. Um, they ran, and it was only Falker who got away. Well, that was in the harvesting field. Yeah, that's when like Falker says, "Yeah, in the fields." And Sammy leans around. There's just death there, you know. He's like it, Falker's just kind of like ruminating right now, not even looking at you. Like clearly, like in in his mind's eye, uh, describing like the air was so cold. It smelled. The smell of blackberries came through the air, and that's that's all all he, all he says is the, the black the blackberries. Yeah, all right, um, that's helpful. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember what you to... saw? If there was a ghost, or if someone took Clarence, yeah. you had to have seen something. Sounds like you're persuading to get him to open up to you. Sure. <laughs> so go ahead, Timmy. Um, all right. Anyone in the system? Um. Uh perhaps I could manipulate in some way. Uh, like hey, I'm trying to think of how how I could do that. No um No one suggests to you as well. Um, he's Falker like uh, Falker, Falker talks more if he uh, well he still, he still likes his cider and so um, alternatively if you want to try to um, get some cider for him whether brewing it or purchasing it somewhere and bringing it back that could be an alternative to persuading or do something else I was planning on like persuading but i was gonna make something different than the tea that he was making him okay um as like a gear like a supply um you would have to have it on you right is that what you're saying yeah i wasn't gonna make cider because obviously i don't have cider but i have cooking supplies i could make some other kind of drink or something like that but yeah. uh, that that won't help unless it's his favorite thing. Gotcha. You yeah. I was well. So you, you know how like with my persuading, I can add like a gear or a trade or things like that. That's what I was you thinking. Supplies to the role. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, the only supplies that would matter here is his favorite cider. Okay. But we could go and get some. Yep. I mean, you got to get it from the golden leaves. <laughs> Good luck with that, fellas. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine if I just try to persuade him. Um, okay. I just don't know if anyone's helping me in any other way. The yeah. only thing I could think of is that I have a very cute and fuzzy bee, and I could be like, Millie, <laughs> go sit with the nice man. Yeah. But I don't have any useful skills. No. Does he happen to have a beetle? No. 
No, but um, yeah, Falker Falker was traumatized and needs help. You could try to comfort him with Millie. Yeah, I mean, can I do that? I don't know who the hell. Yeah, let him let him like pet the 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 bee. Here's my very nice fuzzy bee. She's very well trained. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the, the bee makes a meow sound. It's, it's pets. <laughs> Works for me. All right. Um, let's see. I don't know if I have anything else that will help me. I think that those are, that's it. Um, cool. Are you helping in any way, Brandon? The only way I can possibly think to help would be in a manipulative sense, where I play on the fact that he's scared and, and paint uh, Timmy and I as noble, like, people who can help him by finding the things by like saying that look at look at how much of a brave fighter timmy is and i'm a you know like pull my cloak around and be like and i'm a cunning survivalist you know all that business yeah like we can fix the problem yeah like, we can we can we can get you some sweet sweet revenge you just got to tell us what you saw yeah, yeah. i can see mm-hmm. that work yeah totally Oh, I can persuade be... him being like, oh, I can get you revenge. You know, that, yeah, totally. Sort of like, almost like good cop, bad cop, but we're both working for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We'll be the bad I mean, cop. Since, he's, like, since he's bolstering up like that we're fighters and that we can take care of the the situation, could I use brave? Like, because Timmy can try to like- Absolutely. Brave for them. Okay. Absolutely. But like, tell me what, yeah, like what, what does Timmy say? Like when, like to show like that bravery moment. Cause like- Yeah. So like, as Brandon- like, like every movie. You know, or like, what is what is that thing? I don't know if Brandon, if you want to actually like RP what you said, and then I can follow up. Well, it'd be pretty much uh, exactly that. It'd be, you no, know, uh, now Timmy's gonna Timmy's gonna talk to you in a minute about uh, all the things that you saw in the fields. Now, uh, I, I I'm, I'm not much for talking. I'm you know I'm a sneaky survivalist. I've lived in the woods so long. I don't do so well with people. But Timmy, he's real nice, and he'll help you out. Uh, he's real brave. He's, uh, he's, he, he's, uh, he's a great fighter. He's, he's taken on weasels before. That's, uh, that's why if you give him a sniff, he smells kind of funny. He's, uh, he's a, he's a brave old mouse and he's got history with weasels. He wants to help you. Ooh, so maybe instead of using my brave, I use my musk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. Because of what Brandon did. Um, Yeah, totally. Yeah, I guess Timmy will add on that. He's just like, yeah, it could be a burden though sometimes. The the smell. Not everyone welcomes the smell of weasels. But I see it as a, I was a survivor. And uh, he pulls down his cloak and you can see like his missing ear. And yeah. uh, Timmy's like, I made it. Well, I spent a lot of years with those weasels. But I vowed that if I ever returned, I would come back to the mouse guard and make things right. That's what my father would want. Not everyone makes it. But like Brandon said, we're here to help you. And whatever we can do to help get the harvest back, before the winter comes, we'll do our best. You have to trust us. And in order for us to do it, well, we kind of need to have some more information. Perfect. Also, we just right. got another random assigned fate point from um, from uh, the retweets. We are now at 20 retweets. Thank you, everyone. Ooh. Get that fate point. That's yours, Brandon. Yay. Get it, Brandon. All right. I'm gonna. What am? What's my abs? Thanks, chat. Uh, I'm rolling four dice. It's a versus test. All right, here we go. Ooh, seven dice. Yep. Uh, I, well, my four dice got me one success. So yeah, you you wildly succeed here. Woo! And so, um, awesome. So so Folker goes in to kind of like retell his side of the story here, right? Like you you've 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 worked him, and he he looks and he's like, yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, 
Clarence and I, and we were both looking at some some apples, and we were out there with our beetles when the air went so deathly cold, and Clarence thought he smelled something sweet in the air, not not like apples, but like and. and and then, you know, like, that's like when the camera kind of like does that sort of like wavy fade into like what his recollection is like in the fields, right? Of, of uh, with him and Clarence. And uh, they were, Clarence like, you smell blackberries? And uh, they're like, yeah, I do. Why do we smell, what? And then like, we sort of like see that, that like little crink in the grass nearby, right? And they go over there and it's just another beetle and stuff. And then someone says like, wait, did you see something white over there? And then like the, the, air in the back of their their necks gets kind of like raised and they're like i i thought so i'm not i'm not sure we should do you want to i'm not cool here you know and they turn around and um that's when he describes the the largest weasel pure white and we just had to run and and he just he just ran and Cla- clarence didn't make it and uh, yeah, we sort of like see in, in, in his in his impression, right? We just see sort of like the the skull face of a weasel uh, wearing the sort of um, Saraceny crown, uh, jeweled helmet, wielding a giant blade, like coming down as it like uh, and like just like the silhouette of Clarence as 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 he just runs. Yeah, um, and I guess like the next thing that Timmy will say yeah. is like, I know it's hard, and thank you so much, fucker, for you know, telling us, and I know this is probably not a fun thing to try to remember, but if we're going to find Clarence and this weasel, well, we need a little bit more information. What did he look like? Anything specific? A scar on his face? And then I guess that's where you described, like, the crown and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ghost or Clarence? No, the the ghost. The the large white weasel. Yep. So it had a crown on its head. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the crown on his head. Uh, think of something that's more like um, so. So the way Mouse Guard sort of handles weasels, they sort of give them like a Saracen kind of look. Like think about um, like the Crusades, right? And think about like what or like more like like a Moorish knight would look. Um, kind of like that. Uh, the head, it has like a nice like cloth kind of backing to it, um, as long as like a nice like top metal crown part, um, speaking out jeweled, speckled, and like underneath the sort of like tab, like not tabard, but like that sort of like cloth that hangs down the sides of this crown, like it's the face of just like there's the skull visage, right, of, of, of the king. He's wearing like a long white sort of like tabard as well, sort of dressed for war, right, with um. And I guess there's a, probably like an arrow, uh, like a, probably like an like an arrow sticking out of like where his heart is, where he was shot, killed. Okay, and then I guess the next thing would be, um, and what about Clarence? What does he look like? And that's probably where um, where Nolan kind of like picks it up to. It's like uh, Clarence was a bit of a um, big gray mouse. Pair of glasses, well dressed. Wore always like to wear wore a lot of vests. Never. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking of like a chubby gray mouse with like glasses and a vest on. It sounds adorable. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna say, uh, Brandon? Oh, it's not wrong with liking vests. They keep you very warm in the in the winter times and. In the summer times and the, the fall times and the spring times, basically whenever there's a breeze. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> Timmy just yeah. looks at Brandon like, okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, Falker's like, the curse is real. I know no one will. It's, it's, I can't, I can't explain it. It's real. I saw what I saw. I believe you. I believe you saw something. And if it was a weasel, well, I kind of look at the other two. It's not going to be something easy to deal with, that's for sure. And like Timmy kind of gets like a feeling in his gut. And then um, he says, and I guess the last thing we need to know is where exactly in the apple harvesting field were you? I don't know if we have a map. 
Um, Someone's a cartographer. I know that. Yeah. And we were in Dory yeah. Gift before. Yeah, someone could totally make a cartographer skill based off what they're telling you, the directions they're sort of giving you in the harvesting fields. But basically, there's like a small little stream or a creek that runs to the south of Apple Loft uh, in the harvesting fields. And that's sort of where uh, they were. And so if somebody wants to make the map, the map there, or we can just uh, cut to y'all doing the investigation. I'm, I'm not a cartographer, so I wouldn't be one to make a map. <laughs> sure. I have cartographer. Um, Eddie, don't you have, have have cartographer as well? I do not. No. You don't. I think, oh, cool. I think Alicia. I think I think Rockford has it. Uh, okay. Rockford's the archivist map person. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, that makes sense. Well, I do have cartographer. I, I mean, I've only got two dice in it, but I mean. I mean, no it could become a useful yeah. gear item that we can use in a role in the future. Could totally. Be. Yeah, okay, let's, let's uh, do it. It's, a, it's an ob two test, actually. It's an ob two. Oh, I've actually got free dice in it. I, I assumed instead of looking, I've got free dice in it. Nice. Yeah, it's ob two because uh, you have like firsthand information and it's a simple map of a nearby area. I mean, ob two free dice, that's a definite win, right? <laughs> that's how map works. <laughs> oh, God. Nope. Nope. Uh, can you use anything to reroll or fade or anything you want to do? Um, I don't. Ha uh, mm, yes, I um will be looking at the harvest beetles all around, and I'll notice mm -hmm. that they're following certain paths, which must mean things like water and things like that. And I'll look at my map and yeah. I'll just be like, "On oh, no, a hang on a minute, I'm holding it upside down," and then I'll turn it yeah. up the right way when then suddenly all the water's in the right place, and I'll I'll reroll them things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no absolutely uh just uh, are you spending a persona or fate uh a fate i'll just run re-roll one check okay oh boy come on there we go, Yay! There you go. Hey! There you, go. you got it nice. i love awesome. that you were looking yeah. at it upside down <laughs> and that was a great use of your wife um, yes that's a, Ooh, that's, that, a that's, that's a pass and a fail now yeah there you go <laughs> come on now you just gotta help people with it or uh yeah okay um all right so we're okay um so you have a good idea of where you want to go right so let me let me describe sort of like you know we turn the page again in the comic book here and um the party uh the three of you are going through these sort of tall uh tall uh, blades of grass around um going through this field um, we see like a, a bigger unharvested apple with a couple of beetles like chomping into it right now. Um, we see kind of like following you around has been a little black beetle. Um, and then you hear a little bit of like crinkling in the grass and then whoosh, as a giant wolf spider just eats the beetle. The little black beetle is just following you before kind of just going back into the grass. Um, well, that welcome to, uh, I yeah. don't like spiders. Uh, it seems as though the, the lack of harvesters has made an abundance of beetles, which means abundance of things that eat the beetles. Mm. Um, you've been, yeah, you've been out here for a while. Um, you still have your map, uh, with you. Uh, when you uh, sort of have been following that trail to the river, to the place where uh, Folker and, and, and Nolan were, were helping you, uh, guide you to, you think you might have found it here. Uh, it's just when you find a harvester basket, uh, obviously a, 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 a mouse-made harvesting basket has been sort of like tipped over. It's kind of like hanging off a small little like dead branch right off the ground. Um, and... Uh, a little bit of like a strip of like a, a ribbon or a scarf or something. This must be the place uh, that, that was described to you. But uh, if you want to know more, you're going to have to look around. Guess let's do that then. Yeah, who's the one doing the investigations? Um, I have two in scout. I'm guessing we can use scout or survival. 
Would those two make sense to you? Both of those things. I would be definitely scout because you're looking okay, around for hidden yeah. things. I have two in scout. I don't know who I has. I also that. have two in scout. Brandon, what you got in scout? I also have two in scout. I think you should do the roll, Eris, because we both did a roll already. Yeah. It's your turn. Let's do it. Okay. Like, this is we, also a versus test. Can we help as well? Mm -hmm. I would assume so. Because Describe I, what you're doing to look around. Well, I I have a forward instructor, so I'm going to take this opportunity, especially without being, you know, without having a uh, Rockford around to to stop me. I'm going to be like, well now, uh, well now, Eddie, you see when you if if we were in Wolf Point, you see these kind of trees here. That would be indicative of like a nearby uh, scenting point. Do they have scenting points down south? Do you guys scent down here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So now you can see the way that that tree's all stripped back, and I'm just like, it's it's not the most helpful, but it might help, like, identify where things are being, where things are out of ordinary. Yeah. Um, And can I only help with the skill? I can't help with a trait. Um, You can help with a skill, or you can help with a wise. Okay, I can use. I have weasel wise. Yeah. Would that come in handy here? I okay. Mean, yeah. So, um, because I know what like weasel, weasel tracks look like and stuff like that, maybe I can specifically be like, "Oh no, that's a that's just a yeah. an owl," and then be like, "That's it. That's what we're looking for." Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. You got two um, two bonuses. Since yeah. One of my traits uh, is curious could i use that like you're making the role right yeah yeah totally because i'm um, i'm very curious about this weird ghost situation and i'm yeah. like seems fake but i'm curious what's going on yeah like we kind of see the like on on camera we kind of see the three of you kind of just do that sort of like rotating around individually kind of like looking in the each different corners around this area kind of like doing that sort of investigation forensic kind of thing trying to get an idea if this was a point and click adventure game, you're all using your mouse around clicking. Can you get point. anything for your instinct on a roll? Like in addition to your roll, if you have a good no. instinct? Okay. Nope. It's just a way to farm. Fate. It's just a way to farm persona or fate or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. Just asking. But Curious but is I think great, right? Her instinct, uh, Eris's instinct for Eddie is good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. What? Uh, and it's a versus, so the op doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter, but just so you know how much dice you're going against, uh, you're going against seven dice. Oh boy. Uh, I have five. <laughs> well, yeah. um, do you want do you want to add any persona to it? Um, you should have supply. Uh, should you, yeah, you should have supplies on this for the cartography for the map. Oh yeah. Okay. Wait. How do I build that? You're adding six. So you're you add two because you're thing, and then you're adding curious. And then you have two from us, so it's five. Plus the map is six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two, adding four. Yep, yeah. uh, that doesn't matter. Nice, uh, that's good. And you get to re-roll, you have two crits. <laughs> but it doesn't it. matter. Hey, awesome. So, uh, let me let me help you paint this picture here. Um, you're curious because you were, thought you saw something glistening, uh, kind of near the water. Um, however, the most direct route there uh, puts you in the path of a wolf spider. Uh, but the wolf spider sees you coming, and rather than try to um, hastily try to defend its little lair, uh, it just grabs its beetle and just kind of scurries off in its little mandibles. A deeper away, um, leaving it to um, not be a problem. Uh, so you make it over to near the river. I imagine Timmy, Timmy and Eddie are like looking, and um, Timmy's like pointing at like, oh, I think that's one of their trails. And Eddie's like, I see something over there. And then we both look, yeah. and then we just watch this happen as like the spider looks at us, we look at it, and it grabs his beetle and runs away. And we're like. Oh. <laughs> that's what just I like, imagine. Just the spider with this dead beetle in its mouth just zoid burks away. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Does not want to deal with you. Um yeah, wolf spiders are terrifying and fast, by the way. 
I have um, pictures of them. When I lived in Alabama, yeah. I was like, what are these spiders? They were like, they're hairy. They look like tarantulas almost. Yeah. These are, yeah, these aren't the web ones These uh, for anyone who doesn't know. These are the, these are the, I move fast and kill things. I wonder if I can find a photo. I'll have to the look. The ones that jump, that jump at your face. Do they but also I jump at your face? Oh. oh yeah. God. All right. Well, we're going to get a flame. It didn't power. jump at me, but it was sitting in my driveway and I was a little, it was like in my driveway and it was huge. They're the ones with the babies on their backs all the time. I uh, I only have like the oh, English version of wolf spiders, like the little, they can talk about maybe that big, biggest, which is big for England. That's big. Um, uh, that's big. And one time uh, I was living in my old, in one of my old student houses. I was, there was this bathroom, but there was always a couple hanging around in there. And one time when I was getting out of the shower, uh, I looked in the mirror across the room as I, as I was like getting out of the bath, stepping out of the bath and it was crawling up my shin. Ah, ah, <laughs> that's so I hate when things are crawling on me. Like that's like, just like I'm surprised I didn't go over because I was like doing like the one leg shake thing, like on a, in a wet bath. Like yeah. Why would you shake your leg? What if it bites you because you're like moving around? Well, I'm not gonna hit it. <laughs> Supposedly, wolf spiders are pretty friendly, like as far as spiders go. They're not as aggressive. Like towards that sounds people. like a spider sympathizer. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a spider sympathizer. Last year. Hey, I don't mind spiders. I just don't want them in my house. If you're chilling outside, man, you have a good old time outside. Last year, more people were killed by cows than by wolf spiders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. what? Anyways, we're getting off what track. What kind of um, fact is that? <laughs> right, we are getting way back, off track. Sorry. Back, back, yeah, we're getting away. Back on, back on track. Um, what you find... Um, is that it's been trampled on by beetles and spiders and what have you. Uh, you find a white snake scale in the dirt, and it smells of blackberries. No. Is this like a oh. scented thing for blackberries, or is it like actual blackberries? Is there any juice or anything like that around? Uh, no. It just it has the 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 tr trace scents of it. And we know that there's a blackberry bush that was like the entrance was hidden, like sealed mm -hmm. off. Yeah. But now that we see all the blueberries, I mean, at least Timmy is assuming that 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 the entrance has been opened. When I hang on a minute, does she? I don't see any blackberries. All I do is smell them. Uh, yeah. What if what if someone's doing exactly what we do at the borders, making us all get the heebie-jeebies, uh, because we're smelling something that associates us with fear? There ain't no such thing maybe. as ghosts. Or maybe someone opened up that entrance that was sealed off. You're just gonna make our way to that entrance. You have to, you have to go travel there and find out. Either way, oh, I think wait. we're gonna have to just keep going. We should probably take this. And uh, Timmy's gonna grab the white scale and plop it mm -hmm. in his pouch. Sure. Um, and before he puts it in his pouch, he's gonna be like, "You don't think this is from that?" No. He puts it in his bag. Yeah. <laughs> we're a long way yeah. away from that snake yeah. right so like your time in apple off talking Whoa. to Parker and and nolan and 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 everybody like you have a general idea where this blackberry bush is and stuff like you know that it's it's across the it's on the other side of this creek uh and it's, it's a ways journey but none of you have never personally been there before now like it, th i would allow you to whoever wants to if you're making this journey to use the map that you uh, made as supplies as well for this test. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I'll, 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 I'll be holding it up and pointing things out just the way that Brandon does. Ever so slightly annoying, but not so much enough that you can call him out for it. We're, we're doing another scouting thing. I think Eddie. Uh, this will be actually uh, pathfinding to get there. Oh. To get to the the blackberry bushes and and this. I have a two in pathfinding. Basically, following the trail that this yeah. like oh my, the three and pathfinding. It makes sense because you are already kind of scouting, then you find the trail. So, 
Cool. Also, I did post the photo of the, the wolf spider that was in my driveway <laughs> in the Twitch chat. I'll post it in Zoom too so you guys can see it. It's horrifying. Yikes. <laughs> That's a yikes. It was huge. Like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Anyways, <laughs> what? So we're following this path. Yeah, we're following a path. Um, I can. Uh, I guess you're fine. You're finding us a path. Yeah. Yep. Like that's basically what you're doing. Like you have the scale, you have the scent of black, uh, the blackberries, and you're and this map, and you're so you're kind of just putting it all together, right? So I will use that? Weather Watcher to help you as you're is, trying to find the path. You're you're fighting against fall because the problem is that it's been you're in the Indian summer of of the of the year, uh, so it's still pretty hot out. Um, so Can I use Weather thing. Watcher to help as she's trying to find the path? Totally. Okay. Do yeah, Timmy's kind of like looking up at the sky and like looking around. Mm -hmm. Do we still have gear too? Because we have the like the map and stuff. Or yeah, I'd assume you're using the map for the pathfinding. Yeah, give you the map. Definitely. You have three plus the map plus I'm helping you. Are you helping Brandon? Oh, can I help as well as give the map? The map counts as gear, yeah. not as not as yeah. your assist. Fantastic. Exactly. Fantastic. Then. Um... I guess I I would like to help um, by looking out for uh, danger. There's wolf spiders about, so I'm gonna be. Uh, oh, that's helpful. Out. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So that gives you six. I don't know if you have anything else. Ooh, maybe use your curious. That would give you seven. You have curious level two because you can only use a beneficial trait once. Oh if it's level yeah. One. I don't know if she has curious level two. Yeah. No, I have level one. No, just level one. Okay. okay. And this is an op test or a verse test? Uh, this is a uh, an op test. You're you're against the the a static obstacle of five. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Well, uh, your six it's dice. One six. You got two. You got two successes. One of your successes is a six. Do you want to play the? I'm going to try to make that two successes into five. Yeah, why not? It's fate, right? Eight mm -hmm. to so reroll the six. Persona eight. to reroll all the fails, but you have to have a wise that makes I, it. Yeah, the only wise I have is B wise, and I don't. Or <laughs> to reroll all the failures, you can use I mean, persona. I guess could maybe make that argument. Uh, but you could use two fate to reroll one that one six, and then also reroll one failure. Right. I do also have a reroll. Do you have a reroll? The re does it reroll? Let her reroll all of it, or just one dice? That was just one dice. Yeah. The free reroll. It's just one dice, right? Yeah, I yeah. think it was just. But you, your your sixes could explode, or your re your rolls could explode. But I don't know if they will. Well, so. I can spend, you said I can spend two fate and reroll. Two dice. Yeah, a six and then one failure. Mm -hmm. Let's start. You spend with two that. fate to, to reroll two. Yeah. Um, you can't use your persona because your wise doesn't make sense. Yeah, unless you have a good reason to use your, your yeah, wise. I can't think of a good one. Okay. No problem. Two D6 is greater than four, right? You could stretch it like Brandon did. That was pretty good. <laughs> I feel like a lot of times when I end up using anything related to the apiary or the v wise, it's like, and I send Millie out to look for things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Millie rocks, dude. Actually, that could work in this case because we didn't use Millie. We didn't. Well, let's start. Let's start with this. Like as you four. Oh, you got four. Uh, I mean, I could try and use my free roll. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Every roll is your full and shy. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, we Bummer. Tried. 
right. So that was only 1d6. Does the free reroll only let you reroll one dice, or does it let you reroll the entire test? No, just one die. Okay. Right? I thought the one die reroll was how it works. Um, I was asking. So so for those listening at home, um, uh, Eris, a.k.a. Eddie, uh, Eddie was trying to get their, their Pathfinder test complete. I was an obstacle five, but after everything, we can only get up to four successes. So it's a failure. Uh, consequentially, um, it is hot out. Um, Eddie, you are tired. It's my fault because I wasn't watching the weather good enough. Yeah. You are tired, and the other two, because no one helped with wises, they're not insulated from the failure. You're both hungry and thirsty. Great. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, Timmy's always hungry. <laughs> Damn it, I was um, healthy. Damn it. (laughs) Hey, uh, but as conditions are, um, if I give you conditions, you mean it means you still succeeded, right? So you arrive at the blackberry bushes, and nearby is a is a large earthen mound. Um and at that mound is an is an entrance to to what appears to be an earthen tunnel. Um all around here, um you know, scattered around the opening to this tunnel are are shattered bricks, and um, maybe the first thing we see as you're getting close to this place is like you first you might like pass this little blackberry bush or like a little like a, a, you know a, one of those kind of things. But then as you go in, uh, you see like an old mouse guard sign that's been kind of like tipped over here that says like you know danger, um, you know don't don't come here kind of thing. Like you know this is a dangerous place, um, you know no trespassing don't play here kind of stuff by order of the the guard from like and you like you can see the sign it's like it's like halfway in the earth in the earth but it's like 11 you know it's it's like 20 years old right like it's an old sign um, it's kind of like imagine today like going past like a 1950s nuclear you know or kind of bunker kind of thing like the signs kind of eroded that kind of thing um yeah and does it so. look like the area has been someone has gone through that area and the in the recent time then? Um, not really. Uh, hmm. Not as far as you can tell. Maybe there's like an old path here, but like if it's used, it's hardly been used at all, right? It's not, it doesn't look like it's it's well-worn or anything like that. Um, okay. So yeah. So, and then then we finally get through the bushes and we find this earthen earthen mound here. Um, in front of this earthen mound is, is an entrance. Uh, and around this entrance is scattered around all of it, like all around are shattered bricks. Um, time and weather is not the cause of this breaking. It looks like this this like sealed up entrance was broken intentionally and by something very forceful. Just the cause is unclear. Uh, do you want to approach closer or or is this a good time yeah. to take a break? Timmy will walk forward bravely and uh, kind of take it from there and be like, all right, I'll go first. Um, and he'll like puff up his chest and he'll like, he'll take out his like weasel knives and start walking yeah. forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like kind of right inside of the entrance of the tunnel, um, you find a mouse pickaxe. And, so, and a little uh, like set of torches um, that have been kind of like brushed aside. So I find a mouse pickaxe. Yep. Does it look like this was used to bust this open, this entrance open? No. Mm, no. This looks like it was Kool Aid manned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Is there like an outline of a creature? No, I mean, it just looks okay. like it's just a big old hole. Oh, okay. Right? All right. Like, like someone just punched right through. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, Timmy will kind of like pick up the pickaxe and look at it, see if he can see any like distinct marks on yeah. it that would like identify who would have crafted this piece. Yeah, it's an apple, it's an, it's an apple loft uh, axe. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, looking at the piece, um, It appears to belong, um, based on the the etching and the markings, um, it's Clarence's pickaxe. Okay. Um, 
Timmy will put it in his bag uh, and continue looking, I guess. So you said there's something else I saw? Uh, torches. Torches, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, the air in here smells mu very much of like inside of a tomb. Like, have you ever been around old bones? Like, it, um, like have you ever went to like an ossuary? It smells like that. Yes, I spend so much time with old bones. No, <laughs> yeah. um, but I can imagine. Um, Timmy will pick up one of the torches and uh, kind of throw it one back at Eddie and pick up another one and throw it back at Brandon and pick up one for himself and be like, we might need these. Um, and he, when he puts the axe into his bag, he's like, I think this was Clarence's. He puts it in his bag and uh, he's going to step through the brick opening. Yeah. Right. How's everyone else feeling? This place is, should be giving everyone the heebie jeebies. It's just got to be some kind of misunderstanding. Poker face. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Possibly yeah, bad like, poker face. <laughs> uh, like you, you to to see in someone that's gonna have to light a torch. But we're not playing Dungeons and Dragons here. Don't worry about it or torchbearer. Like don't worry about clocking how many how long this torch is going to last or anything okay. like that. Or who's holding it and who's in the light radius? We're not. This is this is mouse guard. We're not playing that kind of game. But the idea is that if somebody strikes up the torch here, ostensibly one of you do. We kind of like see that kind of the camera kind of. Yeah, pan out I'm a guessing. Bit. Since Timmy's going yeah. first, he'll light his first. But he did throw one back at each of them, so that if, yeah. like, for some reason we get separated, they have one as well. Right, and um, we we light the torches, and the torches flicker and illuminate with deep shadows the high vaulted ceilings that are now crumbling and being broken through by uh, like plant roots and stuff. This is definitely an old weasel um, place of of of. of of living like a like a, an old an old house and this would give you the creeps timmy because it, it absolutely is like a nice old um so for, for those who don't know once again like i wish i had a picture offhand but um think of once like something like you would see in like a mosque like the high vaulted ceilings of uh, mosaic tile patterns very beautiful um sort of like inlaid designs all around here once was paint has now been eroded off uh, scratch. It's very uh, dungeon esque, uh, very very tomb y. Uh, yeah. And then on the ground, you can see like bones of mice and and other creatures. <laughs> Timmy, as he walks forward with the with the torch, and he steps on like some bones, and they cr yeah. creak underneath his feet, his tiny feet. Um, he kind of like takes a big breath of air and like puffs up his chest, and he's like. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to be okay. And he's kind of talking to himself and he's walking forward. Trying to be brave and be the leader he he is. But looking around, it's definitely giving him a little bit of PTSD. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think this might be a good time for our first. Are we doing a break, Brennan? Yes, um, if me and Eric go, and uh, Maggie and Aris will leave you here with chat, uh, keeping everyone happy and, and entertained. Um, yeah, and um, we'll be back in five minutes, um, and then there'll be a staggered break later for you guys as well. Um, <laughs> Chaos. See you shortly. Yeah. Cool, thanks, I'll be right back. We're in control. What should we talk about, chat? Give us, give us the pro tips. You can ask us questions, whether they're about our mouse guard campaign or our characters get some elite background info. Ooh. It's going to take like 30 seconds for them to respond. What is, what is, um, I think you're muted right now. What is Eddie thinking about going before going into this? Eddie's like pretty freaked out because she's from like the big city basically. And she's like, I don't think she's ever seen anything like actually weasel related either. So this is like completely new and different. Oh, is this like the first mission that Eddie has? Well, you're like a new one, right? Like what's yeah. your ranking in the mouse guard? Like very new, whatever the very first, I'm not like, an I think it's called something paw. It should be on I mean, your character. I'm not, a, I'm not a, I, I'm not that 
I'm I am a guard mouse. But you're like, a guard mouse. Okay. So you're not like you're not the lowest tier. You're a guard mouse. Okay. Yeah. I just, like, full like, guard. Just, just a full guard as of recently. And again, kind of like coddled upbringing, literally grew up in the city that like the mouse guard is from. So lots of high ranking people in the mouse guard know Eddie and we're probably like, ah, so it's kind of got like the nice treatment. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Like you've always gotten like the easier like yeah. missions because you know, like your parents know people and you know people. Yeah. That makes sense. And you're from Lock Haven too. So there's probably a lot of stuff near there that can be done and people need help in that area. Whereas yeah. like I'm from, you know, Ferndale, which doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um <laughs> So uh, Timmy is a patrol guard for those wondering what rank Timmy is and uh, Tavern Tales podcast wants to know who has the longest tail. I'm assuming between us two, it's probably you because I'm a pygmy mouse. So yeah, imagine like all of the other, all of the other mice are all regular size my, mouse or mice. Look up pygmy mice. They're like the cutest thing ever. But Timmy is a pygmy mouse, which is like very tiny mouse in comparison to everyone else, but he's full grown. He's just very, very small. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Um, let's see what else we have. Can any move the mic just a little closer? I did, I, I did. already did that, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um. <laughs> I have a lot of problems with this particular mic, but I don't have another one, so. It doesn't sound too bad for a headset mic, so. Sometimes headset mics don't sound very good. It's very hit or miss. And I was literally a guest on somebody's podcast one time, but it wasn't like a live podcast. It was like pre-recorded. And when they actually, like it went up, they had to put an addendum that's like, sometimes you can't hear errors. Sorry, we don't know why. And it's like, oh, oh no, <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. I think with podcasting, you, you always have to find like a good microphone sound to make sure your voice sounds really nice. Yeah, um, if I had, if I wasn't really broke right now, I would buy myself just, a real mic. Yeah, you book. should just get like a Yeti. They're cheaper than like buying like a full mic set up with a mixer and everything. I, I mean, that's what I'm using and it has pretty decent quality. I do have a microphone and a, and a mixer. I just haven't set it up. I'm the worst. <laughs> Bless you. Um, anyone else have questions in chat? You can go ahead and plop them in there and we'll do our best to answer them. So that can be fun. Um, yeah, I think... As far as Timmy and what Timmy's thinking going in here, like for those of you who maybe this was the first Mouse Guard campaign that you've watched so far of ours, um, Timmy's background is pretty dark. And <laughs> a little bit of it has been told in the story so far, um, which is that he is from Ferndale, which doesn't exist anymore, if you guys have seen the map before, um, because it was overtaken by a weasel prince. Um, well, this was actually a weasel princess. Yes. Um, uh, and Timmy was basically kept captive for a really long time, um, until he was finally found by like another group of mouse guard who came to, they were actually there looking for something else, but, uh, Timmy helped them find the area and or Timmy found them and they kind of ran into each other and then helped them and we escaped together um but yeah but currently Timmy's family lives I think in Spruce Tuck maybe I think that's where I put them at your family's all in Lock Haven right yeah, there was a little bit of confusion in a previous episode because um there was a little bit of a mix up and uh we said that my parents went to Bruce Tuck, but they're not in Bruce, Bruce Tuck. They're in Lock Haven for their apiaries for the guard. Mm -hmm. And Eddie has like 3,000 bees, which we've decided that if anybody in chat would like oh. to name a bee, go for it. Never mind. My family's in Lone Pine right now. Yeah. That's where they are. I forgot where, where they went off to. They're going far away. My mom is like is way, away oh, yeah. way away from way away from Ferndale. Which we were in Lone Pine, but not for very long because we were getting people the because we had to bring the mail to all the towns. Yeah. Um, but we weren't there for long enough for me to visit my family yet. 
<laughs> Eric Evil laughs. He's like, in your family, he's <laughs> there. I still have my mother and my little sister. Yeah. My mother's name is Aster, and my little sister's name is Clove. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, hey, Wonder somebody took us up on our offer to name a bee. So we got one bee named Millie and one bee named Sine, who are the two I named, and now we have Tori Spelling. <laughs> so Tori Spelling Bee. Spelling there you go. All right, Tavern. Your B name has been added to the mix. <laughs> the list. <laughs> you have how many to name? 3,000. <laughs> she has 3,000 Bs to name. So if anybody else have, has B name ideas, you can toss them airs this way. Um, how about two and not two? <laughs> so all the two of these are going to have puns for names. <laughs> One of them could be named Honey. Honey Bee. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have to make a list. Oh, uh, and Jeremy. I like that there's just one one bee named Jeremy. <laughs> just one. I feel like Jeremy's probably friends with like a mouse, another or, or uh, another another bee. Bert. Yeah, there we go. Bert Jeremy and Jeremy. And Bert. Jeremy and Bert. Oh, Bert's apparently the worst bee, so make a note of that. Oh dear, it's Bert with an E too. You can give them personalities for sure. <laughs> I'm making one list. day we're gonna go through the tour of the bees. <laughs> She's gonna be Eris saying three thousand bee names <laughs> and Timmy like excitedly petting each one of them. I I love that we took a short break and we've come back to the bee register. I love how invested <laughs> we are in this campaign. We could have gone to anything. Wolf spiders, anything. No. Well, the I don't want to wolf bees. They're creepy. Yeah. Anyway, hi everyone, we're back. Bonjour, comment Yay. <laughs> Yeah. Alright. Um... Or do you want to take a break at this point, or are we good? Oh, do we like I don't, yeah, we'll, I don't know how this works. Later. Yeah, yeah, we'll stagger it. Um, I, yeah, I messed oh. up. We should have done it like an hour in, but you you created such yeah. an immersive world that I got messed up. So we'll probably schedule it for like about 10 past or something like that, unless you girls want to take it early. What time do we end? God damn it, Volgaris, <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> 1 a.m. Uh, we normally okay. wrap up in about 75 minutes. We have like... Yeah, okay. So like 9, 9, 10 p.m. Mm. 9, 10. Not 9 or 10. 9, 10 p.m. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, we have the shot of back inside the, the bastion. It's like a full page spread, right? Of this huge, gigantic, like mausoleum, former um, like castle. Uh, welcoming chamber. Um, many, many arches sort of like adorn um, like uh, this this now turned catacombs of this great palace. Um, you're all haunted by the sounds of something deep below here. Um, something cold and you just kind of, you know, every every so few steps you take, you can kind of hear the sounds of something sliding on the ground, slithering. You hear the crunch of bones underneath it as it goes off to somewhere else. Um, yeah. You all um, catch a glimpse of what appears to be a terrified and desperate mouse across this um, sort of like imagine if you would um, sort of like a audience chamber that sort of goes into the ground like an amphitheater would and across the amphitheater is this sort of desperate mouse looking at you uh, you can see that one of his glasses is broken 
He's a little bit of like a, a, a pudgier mouse. His face is covered in, in blackberries. Um, and like, he's like holding like a little like old bottle of something. And uh, he just looks at you and is terrified, but also like super surprised to see somebody else here. And um, um, yeah, it, I guess it, Timmy it, it, will it, it, hold it, out the torch and uh, I feel yeah. like I'm gonna sneeze. Um, I might sneeze. No? Okay. No, by saying <laughs> well, your body backs down. I'm just like, oh, yeah. every time. I just don't want to like talk and then all of a sudden just blow everyone's ears Photosynthesis, out. Photosynthesis, look um, at a light. It'll make you sneeze. Yeah, I don't really have, I like the light. It's not going to help. Um, he holds the torch forward and he like looks over and he's like, Clarence? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you, I thought I would. Yeah. Yeah. And he like, he like speaks a little louder. Um, he's clearly yeah. terrified. Yeah. Yeah, Timmy will be like, shh, and put his like hand up on his mouth. Um, and he's like, "Are you are you alone in here?" Yeah. Are you sh- think... sure? No, it's there's there's a there's a, a, a and he's like stammering like there's a snake. Oh, just just a snake, okay. Um. <laughs> he like holds his hands as much big as he can, like one of them's a horn in the bottle. Um. Uh, and like it clings against the, the ground because he's like, trying to like, try the immense, trying to describe the yeah. scale of the immensity of it. And he clings and like he like it like falls out of his hands and it sort of drops in the amphitheater kind of thing. Like like the like, cling, 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 cling down and echoes around. And, and he, Timmy, looks, like, like ducks down and like blows out his like, torch. You know, he like, yeah, he like does the like yeah. that, you know, <laughs> thing. Right. And um, yeah. <laughs> Approaching is a giant, super old white milk snake. Its pallid, pale scales give it this gossamery, ghostly, up shimmering appearance. Uh, it sticks out its tongue, smelling the air. Uh, this thing is literally could swallow you all whole, and it wouldn't be a problem. Right, it's this thing is very big and very old. What do you do? Oh uh, well, Timmy. As soon as the clanking happened, he like ducked yeah. down, turned out like took out his uh, torch and like is crouching and watching to see what happens next, um, and kind of like motioning to the others to yeah. like be quiet. I don't know what anyone else thinks we should do. It seems to have coiled back here and is resting. Um, the shape of this room, uh, the size of this amphitheater-esque space, very uh, comfortable for this snake. Um, and it seems to just kind of casually resting uh, in this area. Uh, it, you see it maybe like licks the, the blackberry bottle, you know, but it's a huge tongue. Um, and like its eyes are like glancing around the room. Um, they Damn, just, they, I think they, someone had snake wise, didn't they? It's yeah. probably Rockford. Yeah. They have a sense of Is it Rockford who had snake wise. Yeah. Yeah. The no. eyes not, don't quite glow in the dark, but you sort of, they sort of also have that like kind of, they collect whatever light they can. You can see this thing is very old and very comfortable at home in this place and has been okay. for quite some time. We're all like, are, did you guys both come bunch up next to me? Yes. Uh, yeah. Timmy's going to kind of be like using his trait of leadership and be like, all right, we need to be really quiet. We might be able to get clearance out of here. Um, I have, st- I have like tunnel wise. Would I yeah. know how to like get out? Like, cause snakes normally have multiple tunnels, right? Like there's mm-hmm. multiple entrances and yeah. exits. Yeah. Me- he could find an, a way to get down to Clarence and get Clarence out without the snake noticing us, maybe? That would definitely be some kind of role. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's on the table for sure. Okay. Um, you, are, you are wise in these places. Um, you kind of know the general layout of weasel tunnels anyways, right? Yeah. It's not like each palace is entirely <laughs> unique in design. Um, yeah. I'd allow that. Okay. Um, you might be able to avoid a fight with this thing if you do it. 
Um, it's very risky, though. Yeah. Well, the other uh, option is we fight the snake. But it is sleeping, yeah. so we would get the jump You're, on it. I guess Timmy yeah. will also <laughs> offer that option. Timmy will be like, that's one thing. Or we can try to fight it. It looks like it doesn't see us. Maybe it won't expect it. If it's eaten recently, it won't be any interested in us at all, but that's a big risk. I've never tried talking to a snake. I don't even know how they talk. I don't think I'd ever want to either. I don't either. I've heard that snakes can eat a whole mouse, all whole, not even take a bite. Uh huh. I heard it too. a small mouse, he probably doesn't even need to take a breath. Well, but that's the thing to me. You're a small mouse, but I bet you'd put up on a hell of a fight going down. You'd probably give him serious indigestion. That's the least you could do. You betcha I would put up a fight. I hear they strangle you, though, so you can't really move. So that's kind of what Timmy brings to the table, the, those two options. And if someone else has an, or three, I suppose three, he did offer the talking to a snake option, but he doesn't. <laughs> not talk to the snake. Uh, you totally try to talk to the, to the snake. Just in 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 terms of completely meta dice rolls, but skinning it as which one do I feel like is gonna be more risky in my gut of guts? Ooh, like fighting a uh, fighting and escaping sort of similar difficulties. Um, both of these are conflicts for sure. Um, no, that's not true. Um, if you fight, you most certainly be doing a conflict. If you escape you might be able to be successful with your roles so that you avoid it entirely but in trying to to do the role to escape we could potentially find ourselves in the conflict of fighting the snake right you you or will snake. For, for example if you fail your sneaking around i could be in a position position to say the snake is faster and did notice you and cuts you off Retreat is impossible. You know what yeah. I mean? So then we and have forcing to you to fight. Or talk to it, which yeah. probably won't go well. No. <laughs> uh, no, I could I could take You could I force could us to fight. I could pretty gotcha. much force you all to fight as the as the twist okay. here. But it, it, gotcha, gotcha. it rears and it, it tries to attack. Sent uh, Eric. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So like that so failure on the table here is you know, if this was a, a different game. I think um, why not try this, this kind of desperate. Right. Why not try the sneak, and then if we can't, if we don't, then we fight, right? Yeah. If you, I mean, if, 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 if we're not going to RP it at all, like it feels like we're not going to try to RP the snake, okay. right? If you if you fight now, what I'm saying is that if you fight now, um, a reason a reason for picking fighting now, right? Not saying you should. A reason for picking fighting is that you're dictating the terms, which means that you could also say that retreat is possible, right? Mm. So we're fighting, but retreat is possible. Yeah. Never let your Instead enemy pick have to kill the snake. Yeah. But then the snake then is still is there terrorizing people. Yep. Yeah. And if we don't take back its hide, yeah. then how can I prove that ghosts are phony? So you think we should kill the snake? Well, we've got the jump on it. I mean, we don't exactly right. know much about snakes, but it's all big and sleepy, and it's a lot smaller than a wolf. <laughs> all right. I mean... I'm in. I've never fought a snake before, but how hard can it be? <laughs> to be <sense. laughs> He's like, and Timmy actually looks around and is like, I'm actually more relieved that it's a snake than a weasel, to be honest. Um, and as I look around the room, what else is in this this area that we're in? So the snake is kind of curled up in a bundle, and like uh, Clarence is like next to him, right? Is there any, what else is in the room? Um, like in this theater? Yeah. Um, sure. Uh, so at one point there used to be a chandelier uh, that's been broken down. Um, it looks to be that anything that was once valuable in this place is missing. Um, 
can I ask can I ask you another question when you say like what else is here? Uh, can I ask you what your intense intentions are? Like what are you looking for? Uh, I'm specifically looking for if um, there's anything that we could interact with the environment that would give us a benefit in fighting, like um, an mm -hmm. entrance way. Like maybe one of us could flank the well, snake, or yeah. if there's like if the shan if there was if the sh there was a chandelier at the top, maybe we could have like knocked it down and had it fall on um, top of the snake, yeah. that kind of stuff. Think think. Imagine if you would, you're kind of like in a uh, half of a coliseum. Right, so like imagine lots of arches around, all uh, kind of like with some staircases leading down to this like semicircle area where the mm -hmm. snake is. So you sort of have a height advantage right now, uh, around. But um, dragons are cats. Yeah. Mm. Great D and D streamer, thank you very much for the raid. Yeah. If you want some Oz time zone D and D, hey, check dragons. them out. <laughs> we're, we're currently fighting a snake in an old weasel lair. Yeah. This reminds me of that photo with a cat that's sitting on top of like the car park thing and it looks like it's like on top of it and it looks like it weighs more than it does. And it's like when you spot a dragon in polymorph form <laughs> as a cat. Like it's a little cat, but it looks like it's like been crushed by like a dragon. I know I know the picture you're talking about. Okay. I feel yeah. like most nerds know what that picture is. Um okay. Uh Okay, so there's the primary thing I was looking for was like if there was a chandelier that we could like knock down and drop on the snake. Uh, no, all there's left is sort of the dangling things, uh, the dangling like uh, chain. Right. Is there a way to climb up towards that? Um, yeah, you would have to take some stairs leading up to sort of the highest most level of this place and basically jump to it. Ooh, okay. Timmy kind of is looking around while Brandon's talking and uh, Timmy's like, well, we might be able to climb up there and jump down and use our force to stab the snake. We I, could all jump down at the same time, and I think we would do a lot more damage. That's a pretty big snake. Okay. Uh, the other thing I think we should do, um, we have to acknowledge the fact that we may not survive this. Now, if we don't survive... Free mice will keep this thing fed for a few days. I suggest we free. I've forgotten your name. I'm sorry. I only just met Clarence, you. Clarence. Clarence. Shh. Clarence. We free Clarence. And uh, get him to run back. Get a message to the to Lockhaven to get a whole a whole brigade out here and help these people out. This could be a more than one troop. More than one patrol job. All right. Um, so does like one of us want to sneak over and tell Clarence what the plan is? And then the, the other two of us prepare for do, killing the snake. <laughs> killing the snake. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Depends. a fighter, so I definitely would should be one of the people to like jump up on climb up the I thing. Have and... Three in fighter and an axe. It's the only sharp object I have. Uh I have three in fighter and a I'm a fencer. Uh so jumping off a tall thing probably isn't gonna help me so much, whereas the axe I can imagine that would be better dropping on something. So I I I'll explain the plan and be ready to on guard with a snake. Okay, so snake. the plan is okay. All right, Eddie, let's climb up those stairs. Good luck. Try to be quiet, Brandon. And uh, Eddie and I will head on. Okay. So, um, I guess the camera's going to be on eyes of uh, old, old sneaky McSneaks here. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll creep over to Clarence and go, now look, I'm going to loose your binds. Now, wait until the fighting starts. When the fighting starts, you make a break for it and get out of here, okay? There's a strong opportunity that we're not going to be able to beat this snake. So I need you to get a message to Larkhaven, okay? Tell them there's a 
some kind of old big snake down here. And they should know what to do. But it's interrupting all of the uh, Applecraft harvests. Tell them it's important. Tell them, tell them that our patrol gave their lives. Oh, did we ever name our patrol? I don't think we did. Uh, we didn't even pick a leader. No, yeah, no, we still never... just ran a leaderless gang of peeps. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think <laughs> if you're talking to Clarence about this, you know, I think that Clarence is like, what, what, what do I call you, heroes? So, to, if you if you get to speak to Gwendolyn, if you get to speak to Gwendolyn, uh, tell her tell her Brandon sent you. We're old friends. We trained under the same mentor. Brandon, okay. I can, I can do that. I can, I th I think. I don't know. I've been okay. Oh, but now look, oh, if if you run before the fighting starts, Is you're gonna get okay. Sorry, is Volker okay? Yeah, Volker's fine. Volker's back at the Volker's back at the village. He's real shook up. Probably not as shook up as you, but he's he's back at the village. But now listen to me. Listen, if you try and run before the fighting starts, Snake gonna get you. All right, so you gotta right. wait until we've got it distracted. Okay, I can do that. All right. He seems very confident he can do it. All I think right. you're you're old enough to realize that he maybe shouldn't have this confidence and that this is giving you a bad feeling you can see that he's been surviving on blackberry wine uh, for like days <laughs> for weeks he's so, drunk yeah. he's he's brave because he's got he's got drunk brave <laughs> okay. uh, he's, he's been having nothing it's like, as long as i never have to have to do anything with blackberries ever again <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, now, um, okay, now, now, Clarence, wasn't it, Clarence? Uh, I'll tell you what, why don't you just repeat yeah. what my message back to you? What do you say? All right, wait for the attack. Run to Lockhaven. Tell them Brandon loves you. All right. <laughs> I need help. I need help. I I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, like, my map, I'm gonna take the map that I made, and I'm gonna yeah, write yeah, on yeah. the back of it a message. I'm gonna, look, yeah. forget all of that. Just take this to the mayor of Applecroft. So no, no Gwendolyn? It's all in here. Don't you worry about okay. that. Just get that. Okay. Okay. Just get that to the, to the mayor. They'll know what to do. Okay. I can do that. I can do that. All right. Okay. Sure. Oh, we're, we're fucked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid mm -hmm. courage. That's what I was looking for. Right. Potato hollow. That was the words. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Okay. And then um, I we didn't make a signal, so I guess I'm just gonna. I don't know. I'm just gonna wait for like Timmy and Rock. Like when they're doing that, I don't want to make too much movement in case the snakes looking at me. They're up high. I could still be in like snake eyes. I'm just gonna be like, well, yeah. Slow nod when you do the thumbs up. Well, this is I think, and I think this is the moment when we go to the rolls, and I think you're the one doing it, Brandon, because you're the one who just finished up, and I think you're the one who's looking for the signal. Okay. I, I, so, um, for you, yeah. Right? Like, it sounds like you're the one. <laughs> Scratch squeak was great. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying, so, so correct me if I'm wrong here right now. Um, you know what? No, I, I have a better way of doing this. You know what? It's the player's turn. Uh... I'm going to turn it over to you to see who wants to spend their check at this point of how you want to negotiate what's going on here. Because you have some plans. You have a contingency, maybe. What are you doing about this snake? What are you doing about down here? Well, I think the goal is now, once Brandon has talked to Clarence and he knows what the plan is, then Eddie and Timmy are gonna jump down and attack the snake or initiate the combat. Right. So it could either be, I guess, on Timmy to do it or on you, Brandon, because you're I'm I'm like yeah. Timmy could do it. Yeah. It it's up to you. I don't know what you think. I don't know. I I mean, would I have to spend a check to make sure this guy gets back okay? Cause um cause no. No. Okay. Um, that's, the that's question the... Yeah. The question on the table is 
fighting the snake though yeah that like so whether or not something happens during the fight could be on the table so is this role fighting the snake because i think like that would definitely be timmy mm. uh i mean yeah if, if we want to have the check now of, of having the snake fight then yes we could do that okay. now yeah let's do it let's fight the snake because <laughs> before uh, okay. anybody else can do anything else we have to fight the snake um yeah. all right so i'm gonna use fighter to fight the snake um, um feel... no uh yes and no whoa uh, okay you're using fighter but we're doing a conflict oh yeah we gotta do a conflict oh, oh that's right okay so now i gotta figure out if i'm doing are you gonna put that up on the screen for us so we can yeah i'll, I'll move us over here Okay. We're doing we're doing the full subsystem here oh, for Timmy will be first. Oh, he's so cute. Little tiny so, mouse. Um we don't do this too often on screen, y'all. But um we're doing oh, a, the snake. We're doing a what's called a conflict, uh, which is sort of mouse guards uh completed sort of multi-tool subsystem for handling any sort of thing that shouldn't be resolved with their own role. We're the middling muddy consequences of not getting everything you want is super important. And when life and death things are on the line, especially in a fight against a giant snake, it's a good time to call for one. So we're doing conflicts here. Uh, conflicts You're not the are... car getting away from the bun of bobbles. Yeah. Right. So, so, so everyone knows this is this is what's on the table for how to do different actions. Right. So, so there's the attack, defend, feint, and maneuver actions. If you need me to go over them at any point, let me know. But um, in a fight conflict. Um, in a fight animal, I should say. Uh, you can use fighter or hunter for attacking. You can use lore mouse or nature for defending. You can use fighter or hunting for fainting like or lore mouse or nature for maneuvering. So defending and maneuvering use the same lore mouse or nature. Attacking and fainting use the same uh, attack types of fighter or hunter as your skills. Gotcha. Um, it sounds like, Timmy, you are leading this. So yeah. you are the group captain. Yeah, I went into the uh, first spot. The first thing you do is um, you're going to, so then we're going to calculate our disposition. Uh, disposition in every conflict is sort of your goal, or is your group's hit points. Um, if you ever run out of disposition, you're, de uh, you're, you're not dead per se, but you lose your, you lose your conflict. The first group to lose all of their disposition loses. The idea here is that you want as much disposition left on your side and as little disposition left on the other side, mm -hmm. right? So ultimately zero on the other side and you have all of them because that means you get exactly what you say is your goal um if you're like at half then you're forced to concede some things about your goal um or or attack on additional things and we kind of negotiate around it um but let's go ahead and do our dispositions here to give you an idea for the snakes and stuff okay um so i have let's see i was gonna say i think we both have a condition that's minus one to disposition too right uh, so everyone who's tired and hungry, I'll go into subtracting from this disposition. But disposition I, I'm, I am tired way. and hungry, or I am hungry, not tired. I'm hungry. Disposition is a tired. fighter test in this in this case. I'm hungry, uh, so it's minus one for me. I'm tired, so it's a minus one for me. Hungry and thirsty, minus one for me. So minus three, disposition okay. for us. Well, you th you have to roll first, right? So what happens is you're going to be- What am I rolling? Gonna, you test fighter against an ob zero. Oh, and okay. you, whatever you roll with fighter, you're going to then add to your health score. So I use my fighter, but I subtract three from it. You're going to subtract three after you've added everything up. Yes, so- this Yeah, this fighter test for disposition does not count for purposes of advancement. Um, but- um, you can totally use traits. You can tap your nature. Oh, you can okay. do whatever you want to it to give yourself as much disposition as possible so you don't die. All right. So I'm going to use, well, my fighter skill, obviously. And then I will use my weasel knives as a gear supply because mm -hmm. I am kind of being the leader and kind of guiding people in this, in like what to do. Like, we're obviously, first we're talking to him down there to make sure he knows what's up. And then Eddie and I are going to jump down. So it's kind of like, we have a battle plan so i'll use leadership if i can um and uh can i use a wise in my role have you already used leadership positively Ooh, yeah i have not used leadership in my role yet have i 
I don't think so. I, but I, maybe use, I use musk in my role today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then I, I helped with leadership. No, no. I helped right. with something else. I, I had uh, just, I think I said that I was using my leadership like at, like in an RP thing. So that might right. have. Okay. Yeah. So you still have it. Yep. But I didn't, I didn't roll anything with leadership today. I use Musk cool. okay. instead of Brave earlier. Um, can I use a Wise? Uh, you can't. Uh, well, Wises help you after you roll, right? Okay. Then I guess I have what I'm rolling. And it's an odd uh, People what? can help you too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So if, well, we're going to have fighter, a fighter, can... right? Because it makes sense for all of us exactly. to be fighters in this conflict. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, I'm rolling a lot for this. Yeah, which is right, good. What's the ob? Because we're minus it's three. Zero. Okay, so this is fight Z snake. Okay, and ob zero. Ooh, five. Okay, you add that to your health score. And, um, I can. You said I could use a persona or something. Oh yeah, you can now. Now your wise is coming to play. So you rolled nine dice. You got five successes. Uh, mm -hmm. you, of your nine dice, two of them were sixes. Uh, you can totally um, spend fate to luck those sixes. You can spend a wise to make um, to reroll failures. I'll use a wise to reroll failures because that's more mm -hmm. dice, right? So that would be it's a persona to reroll all failures. So rolling four dice. Mm -hmm. And this is tunnels wise. Which makes sense. So you're picking yeah, like the right. Yeah. It's greater than four explanation point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two successes. Cool. So you're at seven now. Yeah. So it's seven. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good, because we were minus three disposition. <laughs> so you're at seven. Um, what's your health? My health is currently three. Or no, four. Sorry. Uh, cool. Um, so then you, you have one person who's tired, one person who's hungry. Is anyone injured? No. Uh, okay. I thought, then I you, thought you, they you were both time. hungry. Yeah, we're both hungry. I'm hungry. Too. Yeah, I'm uh, hungry. I'm tired. Oh. Of your group, if one person is it, is hungry, then if everyone's hungry, you still only lose one disposition. Okay, if, that's nice. I hungry. thought it was minus three, so it's minus two. Yeah, it's minus two. Okay. Cool. Ooh, right. Sweet. So then, so you're at nine. So, so your 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 group hit points for this this game is nine. Uh, the snake has ten. I could spend a fate as well to reroll the successes if you guys want. Well, I mean, death death is on the line here. So yeah, you might as well. Okay. I imagine. I Did you tell me what your goal is? Our goal is to beat the snake, or yeah. to yeah to beat the snake and rescue. Clarence. We want to kill the snake, right? Because yeah. we wanted to bring proof that it's dead back to the yeah. nice town. That if there's not actually a white ghost weasel, right. it's actually just a snake. A snake. Uh, so I will spend the fate and to re-roll sixes. And I have three sixes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see how this goes. Three successes. Um... So six, two. Yeah, and it could turn into a one. Okay, yeah, so three more successes. But... Hey, that's super good. So you got three more successes. Yeah. Whew. That's why you do it. So now your hit points aren't uh, eight. They're 11, I think, or two, four, six, 12. We can count. It's fine. <laughs> okay, cool. All uh, right. Now we're ready to begin. Did you all know it's going to try to eat us? <laughs> You're like, yep. uh, should should we do our second break right now for y'all or are we good to go um i don't actually need a break yeah i'm good Ooh, i want i want to beat up a snake okay i okay. might like on when it's not my turn go grab some water but i like that it's sure. nice that it's available but i think it's also okay if we just decide the two people who are on the break don't want to do it <laughs> uh, whatever yeah cool. i'm excited so i already picked my th my first card right um I don't have to say what it is, right? Or no, you, you shouldn't. And you should also okay. wait for me to put down my cards before you choose. 
Okay. Um, because like- now you can talk amongst yourselves about your strategy now that okay. my cards are down because I can't adjust my cards anymore. I've locked them in, quote unquote. Okay. Now you can all discuss about turning, uh, like who wants to go first, what you think the snake is going to do, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, well, we're catching the snake off guard, right? Yeah. So I was thinking we just right off the bat take an attack. And then maybe maneuver and then attack again. Because we can basically like Eddie maneuvers to give uh, Brandon a, posi- a better position for attack on the third hit. I mean, if we're taking it by surprise, I'm guessing we talked about this before you went up there. Why, why, yeah. Why don't we all just hit it with everything we've got? Attack, attack, attack. I'm okay with that. I mean, you know, it's it's a surprise attack. Don't want to go fainting on a surprise attack. I mean, I'm all in and pull out my weasel, uh, weasel knives. I'm just standing here with my axe. <laughs> <laughs> It's meant for cutting wood, but that's okay. So um, it can cut through wood. It can no, cut this is, through a snake. This is important because uh, in a fight conflict, uh, the weapon that you have um, helps you in certain ways. Uh, it's not just like plus one supplies. Ooh. Um, which is kind of worth looking into. Um, what's everybody equipped with in terms of weapons? So I can, I have I can a, help. I have weasel knives. I have two weasel ah. knives. I have the axe and I have a sling, but I figured in this case I'm probably using the axe. The jumping okay. axe from above. Yeah. A fencing uh, saber. Yeah, let me find the weapons so you know. Okay, here they are. And in case you have you all have the book, weapons are on page 118. But here's what you need to know. Um, so, uh, Margaret, uh, Timmy has what are called knives. Here's what happens uh, with knives. Um, knives can give you uh, two things here. Um, So knives don't give you a plus one to any of your uh, actions, but instead they can be used as short and quick, which is any successful maneuver when fighting with a knife against a spear, sling, or bow, or thrown weapon, you can disarm them. Um, Additionally, you can use what's called throwing your your, your daggers. So if you throw them, when you do an attack versus an attack, you treat the attack rather than as an independent conflict where both people take all of the hits, uh, you treat it as a versus attack. Uh, in an attack, and so only the person who does the more uh, damage gets through and does and, and actually does an attack on you. Ooh, okay. But once you throw your knife, you throw your knife, but you have two knives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, Eris, so for Eddie, Eddie, you have an axe. Um, axes, uh, you have two different kind of modes or are two things that happen with axes that help you choose. Axes are deadly weapons. You gain a plus one, you just get a plus one success after a successful attack. So that means if you beat um, the the snake by at least one, you get one additional success. It doesn't help you in ties. It only helps you once you win. Plus one successes means you win more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, The problem with axes, though, is that axes are slow, which means if you're going to defend with an axe or faint with an axe, you have minus one die. So you're just really good at attacking. Mm-hmm. And Brandon has a sword. A fencing saber, yeah. A sword. Swords are useful. Um, you must declare now at the start of this fight, before we go any further here, choose what action you want um, the sword to be good at. Once you've chosen, it sticks for the remainder of the fight. So you have an option of gaining a plus oh, one die nice. to attacking, defending, feinting, or maneuvering with your sword. Um... Because swords are useful. Yeah. I'd probably say... Uh, do I get to choose for every fight? Or is this like one choice fits all fights? So this encounter. Uh, it's just this the specific fight conflict. This conflict. I think with the way I've been talking about hitting it with everything we've got, I'll put the plus one on attack. Cool. All right. That makes sense. Awesome. So with that knowledge, that will help influence your roles. Um... What page is that on, by the way? Starts on page 117. Okay. Did you say, sorry, just to clarify, did you say plus one or plus one on successes? You get a plus one die. Oh, cool. 
So that counts as like supplies, basically. Awesome. Yeah, I think okay. I remember you saying that before. Actually, cool. All right. Um, yeah, it only it only shows up in in specific fighting conflicts, and this is like the first fighting conflict we've ever done. But it's against a fucking <laughs> monolithic ancient snake. Yeah. Um. So, looks like we're good. Looks like all our cards are down. We're ready to begin resolving our, our volleys, right? So those who never played this game before, what's going on right now is that uh, on the conflict screen, which I think y'all should be on, um, we have three sets of cards. And each of these cards are gonna go one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors volley. And we're gonna resolve each of those one at a time and, and describe what they do. Uh, so let's go ahead and flip our cards. So y'all, I think y'all chose attack, attack, attack. Mm -hmm. The snake is going to maneuver first, uh, then attack twice, which looks like the snake is going to try to um, basically position itself to the as far back as it can. But um, this is basically the snake trying to use its reflexes and initiatives as you try to get the drop on it right now, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so... Uh, in terms of order, this is you, Timmy. You, you wanted to go first. All right. So I'm rolling a f attack, right? A fighter? or Yeah. Okay. Um, Just for so... understanding of the table, is it like losers and victories on the table? How do I know which one wins? Is it the V or the I? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so that's this is the type of test that you're rolling. A V means it's a versus test, and I means it's an independent test. Independence, just butt heads, you both aren't rolling against each other. You're both rolling an, uh, against an ob one. And so whatever successes you do, that's what you do. And so We're attack both. versus attack means you both just hurt each other, right? Uh, attack versus defend means versus. When you verse, you compare the marginal success, which means how many more successes you get over their roll. That's okay. the amount of damage you do. Okay. Right? That's cool. Like profit, basically. Like think about profit versus the cost. Of, the cost is whatever they roll. So this is, this is a over. versus because it's an attack versus a maneuver. Attack versus yeah. maneuver is a versus. Correct. Yes. So um, I'm going to use my fighter. I am going to... Everyone can help each other on these tests, by the way. I it's not a... think... I'd like to try to use... Um, if I can, uh, quick witted to basically, um, find an opening for this, like where like to best jump and drop on the snake. Totally. Yeah. Um, also that's, that's good because right now the snake is usually kind of using its old coils and stuff like it to, um, to like belie how quick it is. Mm, so, okay. uh, so like your, your timing is kind of going against its coil. It's, it's like wrapped up coiled nature and how fast it can spring. So and then this, I have my weasel knives as gear. Um, uh, no. Uh, like no. I said, your weasel knives don't count as gear for a test. They have okay. a special things where you can so throw So I just have them. one. Can, and people can assist me, right? Mm -hmm. People can assist you like normal. Okay. So right now I only have one yeah. addition. So I don't know if anyone else would like to assist. Right, a stabby, stabbing we, snake. Are we assisting with a skill other than fighter in this case? Uh, fighter or hunter help right now. Oh, fighter then. I'm fighting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be trying to create a distraction to distract it from Timmy coming down using mm -hmm. fighter. You know, distracting is part of fighting. All right. Totally. Okay. Trying to get its attention. Right. Got all my stuff. And what's the ob? What are you uh, doing? This is, this is a versus test. I'm yeah, rolling what's eight. Your roll? You're rolling eight dice? Yep. Oh, boy. All right. Here we go. Ready? Mm-hmm. Three, two, one, go! I brought oh. zero successes. Wow! Wow! Uh, so we made uh, it. So you do you do four to me. <laughs> I just rolled. I for everyone at home, I just rolled uh, eight dice and got zero successes. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, that's pretty bad yeah, luck, actually. Eight wild. dice. I got four ones. Four, four ones. ones. Um, four ones. Stabbing, and stab, and, stab and three twos. That's pretty bad, dude. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Aww. You just um, rolled like two really bad D and D characters yeah. in one hit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, oh man, that's right. What can I say? Uh, this is this is <laughs> classic. This is great for us. So take, 
get rid of those four disposition thingies. Uh, well, are you are you satisfied with just four? Do you want to do anything to your roll? Ooh, you're right. I could do more. You can. Um, how many fails did I have? One, two, three. I had four. I had four fails. Uh, so I you, could yeah. do for the fails. I could reroll all the failures with the persona. Um, mm-hmm. Using my tunnel wise. Yeah. So basically, like, um, I don't know if I can, like, see the, like, the area where the snake had come from before and kind of, like, block its positioning so it can't, like, go back into that area to, like, kind of slither away. Yeah. To get, to get a maneuver back on us type of thing. Yeah. Uh, like, if you, if you would allow me, um, I totally imagine there's, like, you throw, like, the, the snake wants to, like, kind of retreat that way and you throw it's like your dagger at like the keystone and it just like breaks the stone and like collapses down and has to like circle back around as you like drop down on it like like you trapped it kind of oh yeah and then i jump down and grab it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right totally so that's <laughs> one well, well you got one more um, so five you got five um, and i guess i could re-roll my sixes by spending a fate if i wanted mm-hmm so that would like be two sixes. two sixes. That's worth it. I mean, like, this is literally, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, seven, one more. Uh, four, five, six, so six. Woo, uh, all right. You've done, you've yeah. done six Take damage. That little, um, yeah, so, and then Timmy lands, picking up his final dagger as he, like, stands there with both of the, or both of the the weasel weasel knives, and he stands in front of the snake, and he's like, you're not going anywhere today, Mr. Snake. <laughs> Rears its fangs, um, blood dripping down its face. Um, That's horrifying. Timmy, yeah. like, gulps. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> like, and now it's just gonna try to, like, just trash this place and take you down with it like it's going to try to like just rack it you know just just rack its body around and try to like just get one just of you probably Timmy in front yeah. of you right yeah try to like just get in front of you and eat it yeah um it's angry uh cool so we're attacking but this is uh uh Eris uh Eddie this is attack versus attack so I'm just rolling independently right yep uh this is fighter versus hunter I'm rolling seven dice this time because my coils help me with maneuvers, not nothing with attack. So I have three fighter. No, that's wrong. Three fighter. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, can I help still? Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. I'm definitely helping attack with fighter. Yeah. I'll I'll help with instructor. And be like, look, you see the point where it's not moving? Hit that! <laughs> Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the, <laughs> the eyes. eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Love it. Cool. So that's that. Plus yeah, two. I don't think I have anything else I can add to it. No traits? No traits. I'm curious and generous, and they don't really seem. Uh... <laughs> Persona, tap your nature? worth it. I currently have one out of five, but also um, you can, I don't want to die. Well, um, you can do what's called tanking your nature. You can immediately make your nature four out of four and use that as your starting pool. So add four dice if you wanted to do that way. But also fighting a snake head to head is absolutely against mouse nature. So this could totally blow up in your face and you, oh, you will lose your, you will, remember that like you lose the nature equal to the amount you fail by. So not only are you losing HP by your group, you're also gonna lose a hell amount of okay, nature. let's not right? do that then. We'll just roll five. Or maybe one, or if you succeed, you only lose one. It's a risk reward thing. Or you can just spend a, a one-to-one up to a maximum of three. Uh, one persona equals one die. No, No strings attached. What's going on? Uh, and you're rolling seven? I'm rolling uh, seven so I'm, up to, I'm up to five right now. I don't know that I want to tank my nature since this is very against mousy nature. 
it's as Eric was saying. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to spend your. But so I do you... have three persona. I could just buy three dice. So you have yeah. three fight. You have three for fighting. You yeah, get three for fighting. Cross, so it's five. Three, five. Five. I could straight. And up you have an axe. Three. What does an axe, axe let you do? I have a plus one success. First. Yeah, you have I a succeed first, first, but if you succeed, you get a justice. I can take an extra. Sweet, that's cool. Um, but I could straight up just spend five like dice against five. seven isn't terrible either. And then if you if you fail or whatever, you can either use persona or fate afterwards. I don't think be wise. Yeah, is be wise. Oh, uh, so you can only use your fate. So I can only use fate, but I could I, again. I have three persona. I could straight up just buy three dice. Oh, so you can just spend persona to you can just spend persona to get dice, no strings attached, and I have three. We Let's do it. still have a ton yeah. of health as well. Wait, you you have to tap your nature yeah. to spend that persona, no, right? No, you can just spend a persona to get one dice. So in other words, yep. you can spend one persona to get four dice for your nature, but your nature that is, is nifty, rest. yeah. Or you can just spend, you get fewer dice, and it costs more persona, but there's yeah, no we can probably wrap this up in one shot let's, like let's one so round yeah. if brandon rocks it too yeah yeah uh this is versus so there's no ob right that's eight uh this is no this is independent uh oh yeah but i know what you meant yeah yeah i know what you meant yeah yeah all right let's see what it see see what the dice say see what rng jesus says Four successes. so you're going to be knocking you, me out you do have two successes but you are knocking him out. Oh, no, you are you're knocking me out, but um, I succeed with four dice. So um, the conflict is over. Nice. Um, I have knocked you out uh, four, um, and you have knocked me out. Brandon which... didn't even get to do his turn. No, uh, Dude, because your, your attack it. was so good. We freaking rocked Harris, the snake so Harris, describe, describe how Eddie kills the snake. Oh, gosh. So we were up above, right? And like yeah, Timmy we came jumped, from above. Did we? Did we all jump down with Timmy for like the first volley? Maybe, maybe not. It's up to you. You you describe how you, you want to describe it. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, but you delivered the killing know. blow. I feel like Eddie's like never really fought like a big animal before. So she's probably like yeah. terrified. She's got her axe, um, and Timmy just did like a ton of damage to the snake. It's like hurt. I'm gonna be a zoologist for a minute and let's pretend the snake was blue right now. So his eyes couldn't really see very well. Mm -hmm. Not the snake see very well to start with, but extra couldn't see very well. Um, they use their tongue to feel. Yeah, they feel vibrations. Uh, it was like, basically was like, saw Timmy and was like, Timmy can do it, I can do it. <laughs> and like ran up and probably like started the swing, but like swing the ax, but like the last second like closes her eyes like, oh, yeah. I How do you kill the snake? I accidentally killed the snake. I accidentally, I accidentally killed the snake. Yeah, that's hey. what I was going for. That's what I was going for. Um, Love it. But like maybe at the last second the snake lunges too, and like it wouldn't have been such a bad hit, but since the snake lunged at the last second, it like caught it like right in the eye or something, and it you know smashed its mm -hmm. head in basically. Yeah. Well, the snake is defeated. Um, the, I think the consequence here, um, consequences are negotiable. Um, I think the consequence, because it's only what's just called a minor compromise, you lost le uh, you lost less than half of your your um, initial disposition, which means you're only uh, allowed a minor compromise. Which means, or I'm a, I'm allowed a minor compromise. Um, so I'm saying you you accomplish your goal, you kill the snake. And I'm also going to say you rescue Clarence. I'm going to give you um, conditions. And I think all around, everybody is tired and hungry and thirsty, if you weren't already. Mm, okay. Which isn't bad. As far as fights to death go, that's that's damn, real damn good. Yeah, I just sent Clarence back to the village. Can to I save take the everyone. snake's fangs as weapons? <laughs> Timmy's um, had an idea. Well, uh no because you don't have any checks uh, we have th we have two checks left i don't have a check though you don't yeah have a check, well though, that's yeah I, I was only answering the question yeah 
true. Uh, well, that would kind of align with my goal anyway. I want to take something from this snake to prove it wasn't a ghost. Okay. And oh, we uh, could just take the full snake, right? I suppose. Well, yeah, that's a bit. Lot um, yeah. I mean, is there anything you want to do? So like, that's not that is not to me. That's not a check worthy thing. Like you can just do that, right? But like, what is a check just gets you a roll? If your role is to like scavenge something off of this or like make something out of the, the snake, then yeah. If the goal is to prove to the town that this is not, then this is like a persuade or an like, ord test, right? Or something like that. And that is what you do and you have mm. supplies here, right? Because like, like, look, this is the snake, right? Um, something like that, right? Well, I guess we can talk that's, about what, how we want to use the last two player checks. What oh. do you guys want to do with them? I think... Well, I was gonna say my goal was also to reassure the. So maybe yours is the, the persuasion. Town's, town's not reassured at all, folks. So yeah. like, yeah, I could be the one who it like goes into town and is like, you can rest assured the snake is really, really very dead. Yeah. <laughs> and here is a bloody axe and some fangs to prove it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How reassuring that's gonna be, but. So we could spend. We would have a check left over to to steal some things. Right. We um, would. To, so um, here's what I will say to help sweeten the deal a little bit. As you are returning to town victorious, um, Folker has packed up their belongings into a cart. You know, like a nice little like cart. It's got two beetles kind of set up to it, like oxen. Right, and all their belongings are in the round. He's still knit. It. He's wearing Nolan's knit, uh, like shawl around, and he still looks kind of sick. Um, but he's getting ready to leave town right now. Eddie, call out to him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's his name again? I'm feeling like you say wrong. Volker. Volker. Yeah, Volker. Fire, Mr. Fire, wait. No, oh, I, I I got a long way to, to, to go. I'm sorry, I can't. Do we have Clarence? You can Yeah, you, we you, have you, Clarence. You totally can stop him. I, I I'm going to grab Clarence and like run after with Clarence. Sorry, Clarence, drunk mouse. Yeah. You're gonna run now. <laughs> Eddie, help. Ooh, ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Be like, your friend is still alive and like Yeah. Uh, Volker looks like he's seen a ghost and he's like, Claire, you're, and Volker's like, I'm alive, buddy. I did it. I'm alive. And, and he just does, I don't believe, but the, but the, this, and he's like, but, and he's like whispering them, but you can totally hear what he's saying, right? Like, but the snake, how did you? As you get by, it's like, I don't know, man. It's a miracle, but here I am. I did it. I'm still alive. And we could, we could go get that treasure, buddy. What do you say? Come on, you. Uh, it's, uh, and and um, Falker's like, I can't. I, no, I'm, Clarence. I'm so sorry. I couldn't. I can't. And he like looks away, and Clarence is, has that sort of like, dis disbelief on his face. Like, what do you? What are you talking about this was your dream this was your goal this is and he's like i'm 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 moving on i can't do this anymore clarence i can't people people have died over this and it's just like it's not for us anymore and and clarence is just kind of uh, he puts his head down and he says and he kind of like sniffles a little bit he's like buddy i can't not like this i can't come on man don't believe me. He's standing next to Brandon. Yeah. He's like, are they breaking up? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I never really got that far in relationships. <laughs> I mean, like the, and he, he looks around. He's like, the guard are here. I mean, clearly, clearly everything's forgiven. And Falker kind of like just puts its head down. Hmm. Like, I know. I know, friend. Come on, what's the big deal? Come on. 
what do you guys do? Eddie, reassure them. Well, that's your, know, that's your no, role. I'm going to come into this conversation like covered in blood with a bloody axe. And a yeah. pair of Hang on. Didn't, <laughs> didn't we you just save the town? Hear them talking about like swindling people though? Like, is that not what that yeah, sounded like? I thought I got the impression that they were just they wanted to go into the tomb and get the treasure that that was like their dream. Yeah, which of course the locals wouldn't have wanted because they think it's haunted. Yeah, I don't think That's they're swindling I'm people. They're just doing something that wouldn't have been appreciated. Like the locals would have thought they're the ones who brought the curse down or whatever. I think they blew open the door to go and get the treasure and, re- and found out there was a snake in there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, something happened. Or they were like picking pickaxing at the wall, and the snake bust through and was like Kool Aid style ate them. What's up? Yeah. Oh. What's ever? What do you? How do you spend your checks? I don't have a check, so I can't. Yeah. Well, I want to reassure the townspeople in general. I don't know that I want to necessarily spend a check to reassure specifically these two. Okay. I quite like them not being reassured and might act as a deterrent. <laughs> sure. Granted, of course. I'm still standing there covered in blood or whatever, and I guess I'm like, well, uh, I need to work it out. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. And then I'm so going to then... go figure out the best way to reassure the rest of the townsfolk. Like, right. is there a mayor we can go talk to? Uh, there is a mayor, but um, if you want to reassure the townsfolk, that's not reassuring the mayor. That's reassuring the townsfolk. Well, is there something that's an orator test. Look here. Look yeah, at so your. Yeah, so you're in like the middle like of the town. Corona. You can start yelling yeah, I mean, and like. Yeah. I do have door an orator. Isn't... I have a tool I mean, in orator. There's no. Yeah. There's no like. You know, it wasn't a mouse in a snake costume. There's no like Scooby Doo reveal that it was. You know, but uh, you can be like, look at your god as you like throw down like the the fangs. You know what I mean? You'd like totally be like, get out of like, what are you doing? But I mean, but is there a place in town where like people are gathered? Like, if I just go to town square, no, I mean, we're hiding in their houses because they're afraid. This is, this is, yeah, but this is a player's check, and you could be like, you know, I've gathered everyone together and proven I'm covered in snakes' blood. You know what I mean? Like, you could we can just cut to the fact that that people have found gathered them. around you, okay. and you're making the 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 top the speech. All right, so That's, I'm going you to have that power as, as in the player's turn to sort of frame things effort to gra- gather as many people as possible like mm-hmm. wherever they're willing to gather yeah you do <laughs> and i'm going to gather timmy and brandon behind me be like look brave <laughs> <Timmy, laughs> <don't laughs> cross their arms like a mess <laughs> next to you start swishing my saber i'm like a third of your size but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Timmy, i take out my my weasel knives and spin them yeah, so I'm gonna make Brandon hold up. Like, oh, look at the fangs. Did we? Oh, we that? each can have a fang. Yeah. Yeah, you have the fangs. I'll, I'll, I'll hold one fang. Brandon can hold the other. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I'll be like. They're, yeah. I'm not actually very good, at this, but we're gonna see how this goes. I'd be like, people. What is the name of this town again? <laughs> Apple. Apple. Apple Loft. Loft. <laughs> I had that written down. I just didn't look at it. There we go. Um, I'm really like, people of Apple Loft, I know that you believe that you have been terrorized by ghosts, but it was actually just a snake. And it was a large and terrible snake. And it took some lives. I don't know how many it lives. Uh, it, it uh, took, it, it's killed three people. And it took three lives. That <laughs> he knows it. Yeah. Um, but we have taken its life and we bring to you as proof. And I'm like holding up the, the bloody axe still. We bring to you as proof hold up the fang of the snake. I'm like. Uh, give yourself plus two dice for circumstances here. And so, as like basically supplies, right? Like, like, this is, like this is worth two dice worth of like basically one die supply, one die good, nice GM favor here, right? Yay. Uh, so this is, two. yeah, this is an ob three test. Okay, and uh, I guess to me and Brandon, are you helping? <laughs> um, Scrap I don't really know what I have to help here, other than persuader. Could I? Didn't you ask Brandon to look tough? 
I did ask Brandon to look he has tough a and trait. hold up and hold up one of the fangs. I have a trait. It's called tough. I can't use traits. Yay. You can't use traits to help. You can only help with skills and wises. Oh, it's so perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can I use persuader? Um, when you use order, um, the best way to help, I mean, how can I use persuade or how, how do you persuade people? Um, I mean, I can RP if, if you want. Yeah. 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 Like what is yeah. it? What, yeah. Um, so after, uh, Eddie says what she says, um, to me, he's like holding out the thing and he's like, he's like, you don't have to be afraid anymore. We've defeated the giant snake and now you can continue harvesting. Winter's coming soon, and we all need to work together to make sure that Apple Loft is prepared. Yeah, totally. Uh, extra die. Great. You saw that, I think. Tough is a trait, not a skill, Potato Hollow. Think about it this way, like it has to be an action applied to it. You can't tough something. The you know skills I mean? are like specific things from a list, whereas the traits yeah. are more like things you can just describe yourself with. Yeah. Yeah. Traits more are like adverbs. adverbs. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas traits are adverbs. Exactly. You have to be able to like verbiage it. Yeah. Skills, skills, are, skills and abilities are verbs and traits are adverbs. They give context to how you do, how you go about the thing, your verb. The only way I can possibly think I can help is with like fighter or hunter, like in the way I present, maybe I present the, the snake trophy, like a, a hunter's trophy, maybe, but that, that's all I've got. No, uh, no, you do your best to, to hang out around, but you just don't confer, like you help, but you just don't confer any additional die. Okay. Good news is that if this mm -hmm. fails, you're insulated from failure. I guess you, ha you have instructor. Yeah. But I, I can't instruct on a skill the I don't have. Like, if I had an orator as well, I could instruct, but, you know? This isn't an instructful. That's for, like, one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Yeah, I guess. Group stuff is order. But you can instruct them that there wasn't a ghost and that, like, sometimes things appear as ghosts if we, like, make, if, like, we think about it. Like, sometimes we see what we want to see rather than, like, what's really there. Yeah. Like, you know, like it could be a teaching moment in regards to like ghosts don't exist in Brandon's mind, right? Like that was your goal. Your yeah. goal was to prove uh -huh. that there wasn't a ghost, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that would work, but that would, that would be convincing somebody. And that goes back to manipulating, persuading, or orating. Those are your social skills. Manipulation, I don't you? Manipulate, yeah. Yeah. Are you manipulating them? You totally could help with a manipulator. Yeah, you're manipulating them to thinking ghosts don't exist. Maybe ghosts yeah. do exist, Brandon. We talked about this, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll 100% do that then. I'll, I'll, I will use my manipulator and just uh, berate these people for being so stupid about right. thinking ghosts existed. Yeah, like so. So here's a part of here's a part of manipulator that does that often gets overlooked. Manipulator is saying the thing that no one else is will say. It's giving the ugly truth. And that's what you're doing. Definitely. That is 100% right. Brandon. You're all stupid. You've been hanging around here, not collecting the harvest, thinking there's ghosts all over the place, and there's just a damn snake. Yeah. You're giving them the real talk. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm picturing like the three of us on soap boxes now. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly really nice. that's exactly what you've done. You're, you're on cider crates right now. Talking <laughs> to the town. <laughs> I'm yeah. on like 12 cider crates because yeah, <laughs> there's like a stairway up. for me. So everyone's <laughs> so the same height. Everyone for once. You want to be yeah, careful. Yeah, yeah. You want to be careful, Timmy. You're going to end up beside yourself. Ah. Uh, <laughs> this is what it feels like to be tall. <laughs> Something about <laughs> apples and applause. I'm just workshopping and I can't get it right. Continue. <laughs> uh, what's the ob on this test again? Uh, you got to convince the crowd here. So uh, they're rolling against you with uh, oh. three. All right. Not... Well, you just got four successes, so I, I literally can't beat that. Yay! Hey, so you succeed. Um, the town, the town is assuaged. Um, <laughs> they, they feel they feel at um, a sense of relaxation, a relief, um, but. 
they're still they want to know what caused it in the first place. Well, how did how did the snake get out? Uh oh. <laughs> well, it appears that there was. Wait, 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 wait. Do we want to seal. tell them about? Do we want to tell them about the people? Though they might form a mob and go and lynch. Oh, I'm not going to tell them who did it. I'm just going to say oh, that okay. there was. A... I don't, yeah, Brandon would still panic when you start talking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Timmy just keeps talking over <laughs> Brandon freaking out. Brandon, so it's Timmy. like it appears that there was a a giant hole in the way of the the bricks that were sealing the entrance. We think maybe the snake broke through with it. The snake broke through the entrance. It was a pretty big snake. I mean, look at this. <sighs> this was in its mouth. But I, I don't understand. How did it find its way? Where, where the entrance is a ways away from Apple Loft, and no, no harvester, no, no good harvestering mouse from Apple Loft would dare go near the entrance. Well. Maybe it's not so much a harvester mouse going towards the snake, rather the snake being real hungry from being locked in there for a long time. It looked pretty old. And here comes the manipulator. So not only that, you're all so damn jack and ape scared about ghosts and things, you're going to get all your teenagers and kids daring each other to go out there and touch it. That's what happens when you make up folk stories about these sort of things. It becomes legend. Everyone wants to go and see things. You're all damn stupid. <laughs> The old man. Not the most tactful. <laughs> no, zero like... percent. Brandon has no tact. <laughs> okay. You need a trait that is untactful. <laughs> tactless. Tactless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, Clarence is not here. Um, if no one, you, we, I think we still have one check left. I do yeah, unless right. something happens, like on the Clarence and Volker are still on the edge of town. Like you could like rush and talk to them if you wanted to, but they seem to have made up, and they're they're both leaving town now. Yeah, no, Together. I think I, I mean I, I'll, <laughs> dis best. I'll discuss this with everyone else, but I'm thinking I could try and uh, maybe get one of our feats removed if I was to go back to the golden the golden leaf and uh, see if I can. Uh, yeah. If I can assuage the ladies there. Yeah. When you, yeah, you, you want to try. <laughs> um, when you recover, um, I think they, they would begrudgingly serve you. So when you recover, you have to recover in order. So you must recover hungry and thirsty before you recover tired. Mm -hmm. Right. So spending a check to go there and getting a pint would probably be fine. Um, normally, I would say that it would be more difficult because they hate you, but you also kind of save the town. So it's kind of like a regular old role here. So your your personal nemesis is is negated by the fact that you just solved a gigantic mystery for the She's town. Now job. they can finally harvest again. Yeah. She doesn't have to worry about her wife anymore. Okay, so if everyone's cool with me doing that, then I'll I'll like head back to the thing. But like, well, we, the problem's all gone, and I just wanted to come by and say I'm sorry for all the grief I've caused you over the years. Can I have no pint? but <laughs> whatever <Okay>. brand <laughs> it's like it's still gonna be five shillings or whatever you know for like the the, the drink right yeah i understand it's like yeah 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 your apology whatever i'm just glad you saved the town i was waiting for the We're apology to be an apology but with a but something blah, 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 blah. well we get this we get that saying of like well you know, just because you're all right in Apple Loft's books, you're still not even in mine. You still got to pay. And then after, so, so you make the roll and kind of thing, right? And then, you know, like you get your drink. She's like, but this is a start. Like, the like there's a chance of maybe the oh, yeah. making things, you know amending things is possible but you still just just pay for your freaking drinks it's an ob uh, ob one resource test oh if you uh, want to recover um drinking by buying a, a meal and drink from the from the inn uh, so Ooh. i've got four in resources i just roll four die yep other people can help you too if they want um also in resources mm -hmm. help resources help resources yep 
Okay, yeah, I can help with the resources then. Cool, so you got six dice, just get one success. Don't pull an Eric. <laughs> oh, you're good, you're good for it. Cool, you're no longer hungry and thirsty. All of us are just specifically Nope, scratch. just just Brandon. Um, can, <laughs> I know this probably won't put uh, Timmy in good eyes, but uh, could Timmy add something to the drink to make it like more froofy? Only if Brandon lets, lets you. I trust Timmy. After our stew conversation, where I learned all about the weasels, I've pretty much let that mouse do anything. <laughs> Timmy's gonna add a cinnamon stick to your apple cider. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. He's like, and you can use it as a straw too. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I and, being uh, pretty stuck on it and like break it. I was like, <laughs> 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 and if I'm not mistaken, that's our last check. So that's where we end it for the night. Yes. Uh, let's do some experience. Uh, you have solved the Weasel Prince's revenge. Um, there is actually in the in the very very back of the book there is one left like after credits scene um, oh. that I want to share on screen. Okay. Clarence and Falker do not leave to go to a new town. The crate we see that they both are looking at the back of the crate or of their, of their wagon. It is full of additional mining supplies. Oh. And they're at the entrance of the tunnel. And as they're getting everything ready to go to descend further, looking for the treasure, um, Volker asks uh, Clarence, so how did you survive? And Clarence, like as they're like going into the tunnels, lighting up a torch, it's like, it was the strangest thing, man. As I was down there, uh, the snake had me dead to rights. And then I turned around and there was some some giant ghost of something and it's, it scared the snake for me to get away. No one will ever believe me. And uh, that's that's the that's the ending. <laughs> oh, boy. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Let's do some experience. Uh, what? Let's do some goals. He's been eating too many berries. Is he already drunk at that point? No. He's he'll he'll swear swear uh, swear on anything you need. That's 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 his truth. All right. That's fine. He can think that that we're ghosts. What he thinks we're the ghosts? No. no. Before we originally, showed up, like, before we you showed up. up. Oh. We showed up and he was there and he was stuck, yeah. but the snake had so clearly. Yeah. And he's so, yeah. claiming that the snake didn't right. eat him because the ghost showed up and protected yeah. him. Right. Mm. So clearly Clarence and Falker were looking for this treasure. Yeah. Um, they found a snake instead. Yeah. Uh Falker ran away. Um, faster than Clarence. Didn't know what happened. And keep people off the scent. He just said it was the ghost. And then as more disappearance went on, it's kind of true, but he kind of grew more and more despondent over it. Um, a little bit of lying, uh, waiting for this kind of to blow over. Maybe someone could deal with the snake as he tries to find that treasure. Is there actually treasure? Who knows? How did he, how did he know how to find this place? Who knows? And go there. True. Yeah. Those are, those are stories, not for this time. All right. Let's do some experience. Ah. What's going on? Ooh. Ooh. Uh. All right. Playing games. <laughs> well, the belief I was playing this time was some people just can't be dealt with. They're too stubborn or spiteful. And I wish so much I'd played my other belief because I actually played up to that one. Um, <laughs> so I didn't hit my belief. But, like, if I had played the first one, like, oaths are not taken lightly. You must embody the oaths to the best of your ability. Like, the whole Warren Lockhaven speech thing would have got it. But, yeah. Mm hmm You know. So it happens. Yeah, I think for my belief, uh, which was everyone should do whatever they must do to survive, I think we definitely did that. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, mine was when it's worth helping, then everyone can do some small part to help, which I think we all did. <laughs> some parts we yeah. didn't feel was worth helping, apparently, like the two of those guys. Yeah, I guess we didn't look in the cart to see what they were pushing. They, uh, they made up on their own. It was fine. I didn't need to help them. <laughs> Also, right. apparently they unleashed a snake on the community, so maybe they weren't worth helping. Maybe. We did kill yeah, they the fucked up. Like the rest of the community from it. They fucked up, and we as players know what happened, but you as characters don't exactly know the full exactly. truth. We don't know what and, happened. Like, they're bad people. That's bad. They did, they did a bad. That's not good. Three yeah. people are dead because of their truth. <laughs> because of them. They wouldn't just say what happened. Yeah. Anyways, um, you did you did do your um, your goal and your belief was tied to your goal, so you did kind of like a good little two for one there. Yeah. Um, and my goal was help Apple Loft restore their harvest. Did they actually are they able to start harvesting yeah. now? Okay. Um, I wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah, there's no longer a snake. So yeah, I could say yes. Cool. So good job. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but he's just sitting on the yeah. bed yelling at me. Uh, yep, just screaming. So uh, my goal was to prove all the ghosts are phony, and I think I nailed it. You did yeah. nail it, Persona. Yep. Uh, and my instinct is to always stay alert and watchful for danger. You did that. I did. Yeah, uh, we were you did do that. Wolves. Yeah. Um, mine we? was... Oh, go ahead, Eris. I was going to say, I feel that I made myself very useful to my patrol. Yes. Very much. You killed the snake. Mm. Killed the snake. Yeah. Um, made a really exciting speech. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, Snakes mine and was always cook delicious things in my free time. Free moments. I, well, I mean, we ate the, the apple leaf. I put things, the other thing. I don't know if those things count. Mold brand and cider. Oh yeah, and I helped Brandon Cider. Mm, yes, you did. Mm-hmm. Yay. Cool. Perfect. All right. Um, is that that's everyone now, right? Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Cool. Uh then last thing are just group rewards. Uh MVP. Who gets MVP? I Eddie. feel like Eddie killed the snake and then did the epic speech at the end. Yeah, MVP, no doubt yeah. about it. No doubt. You know, this is the best part. It's just like, this shit wasn't even planned for. But you also got the two extra re-rolls at the start too. And I was like, oh shit, it's gonna be, gonna be Eddie, <laughs> Eddie's session. <laughs> and it was. Congratulations. Get a persona. Yay. Uh, workhorse. Um, Eddie's ineligible. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's your MVP. Okay. A workhorse person who helped the most. Um, person who's always there with the right uh, right tools for the job to help out. Do you think um, Brandon or or uh, Timmy should be the one here to do this? I'm trying to think of all the situations they were in. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I know I tried. I feel to like help Brandon them. would be the one that would fit for that because you helped with every every role pretty much, right? So. Let me let me let me let me pitch something, because you're too modest. It should it I definitely should be Timmy. Say Timmy. Timmy for the wingman move early on. I, yeah. Uh, the wingman move. I think the wingman uh, move. You could helped work. all the time as well. I think that is the, and in a way, you really set up the 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 snake to die. Um, yeah, I feel like kicking the shit out of it. I think it's it. you. I think I think I think I would like to say it's you. Sure. What does that give me? Fate or persona? Persona. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these group nice rolls. These group persona rewards, today. Group <laughs> rewards are all persona. You have. How do you have so much persona? Because because I never. I this is the first episode I've ever had to use persona. I've never had a thing that would make sense for my persona at all. The whole all seven episodes until now. Now you know you can just spend them all. So, <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. Very powerful. Like, They're very helpful. Oh, wow. Holy cow! You have so much yeah. persona. All right, um, and then the last one is embodiment. Character who played their traits the most, as well as their conditions. Uh, I would say, can I, can we, 
vote Timmy again? Because like Timmy was in her element in his element but this week with the snake. It can be two, right? So I because it can be more than one. Yeah, I think it can be not everybody. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. would say Brandon should get one too. Cause you tried really hard to teach everybody. You were <laughs> Yeah. The, from the very get go, with your uh, uh, trying to woo all the ladies, <laughs> failing very poorly, being tough at the end, and a grumpy old man and yelling at everybody, telling them you were wrong. Yeah, you you did play a Brandon pretty damn well today. <laughs> um, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with both of you getting it. All right. Cool. And then that's I the did, end. Oh, yeah, I did use a lot of my traits today. Some of them just yeah. as assisting though. Is That's that, totally right. fine. Is that one of fate for the uh... persona. persona? All group, all group rewards are persona. Nice. Sweet. We played mouse guard tonight, everybody. Yay. We, guarded, we, guarded mouse. Guard. we killed the snake. Fun. We did. Tonight. When I was at Girl Geek Con and we did or Geek Girl Con and we did our panel, I brought up mouse guard so much because it has so many systems in it that are just great for like not only like rewarding players but like um storytelling helping you know how to keep in character like doing like doing things as a group rather than just like i hit the the dude with the axe you know what i mean like i think Mm -hmm. it's it's just a really neat system that i i really do enjoy Mm. wonderful yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy (laughs) Uh, Before we start wrapping up today's session, then um, I'll ask you guys and chat whilst we go through to think of a raid war cry as we go across in raid. Um, I think that we already have it. What was it? It was early on. It was in the beginning of the stream. I remember there being one, but I can't remember it. Rolly backup. It it had to do with you, Brandon, or had to do with Brandon when he was hitting on the girl. Warn me when I'm wooing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, warn me when I'm wooing. You gotta warn me when I'm going. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So yeah. in the future, whenever you're trying to woo somebody, Brandon's gonna be like, <laughs> or I mean, Timmy's gonna be like, "Was looking out for you." <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's just do our wrap up then. Uh, Eric, who who are you? Where yeah. can we find you? What, what, what where else do yeah. you do things? Uh-huh. Awesome. Well, hi everybody. I'm Eric. I'm Eric Fulgaris everywhere. I'm Roll Twenties. Uh, analyst um i'm also a a streamer um currently on uh everyone else's channels not my own proselytizing the good new the good news of role-playing games uh specifically indie games um but also i get down with some DD uh like tomorrow morning at 9 a.m uh, i'm running uh, my my adventure path uh fifth edition conversion of the savage tide over the greyhawk channel uh i'm loving that a lot um, I, I tweaked it a little bit. I have a little bit of like my own little house rules that make the game a little fun um, for, for me and, and the group. But if you like role playing, you like Dungeons and Dragons, like combat, you like ships, you like your demons and stuff, that's the, that's the game. Um, but I'm doing all, I do all a bunch of random stuff. If you want to, if you want to play role playing games with me, um, Friday nights, I have open signups for um, what's called Once Upon a Game. I've been running it for three years, I've done hundreds of episodes at this point. Um, we just play one shots of various role playing games that all require no prep. The most important part is that some are GM, some are not, but the most important part is that you just show up and play and there's no pressure. Uh, just do it. It's, it's super fun. Uh, anyways, that's, that's, that's me. Don't take my word for it. Uh, take it back, Scrat. <laughs> uh, well, let's go next around to Maggie. Oh, hi Maggie. Same questions. Who are you? What do you do? Where can we find you? Hi, I'm a homo sapien, and they call me Maggie. Um, <laughs> you can find me at Margaret Crone on all of the places. Um, I am on a lot of channels as well. So the easiest way to find out where I am every week is I pin my schedule every week because it changes. Uh, so if you go to my Twitter, I pin it there. You can go to margaretcrone.com slash schedule, and I always have it up on that as well. And I'm in like seven to eight tabletop RPGs a week. It just depends on the week. And anywhere from Mouse Guard to D&D to my little pony you never know what i'm doing um so uh come check out the content i got over there and then of course i stream i'm pretty much on a stream every single day except for friday and then i upload new gameplay videos every single day except for mondays and um you can find that at margaret chrome plays um and then if you're interested in some mmorpgs i also work for ncsoft so you can go to ncsoft.com and look at all of the lovely mmorpgs over there and play them if you so are interested 
all I got. Wonderful. And last but most certainly not least, Animus Panthera, or as we know her, Eris. Oh, hi. Hello, uh, I'm Eris. I'm a real life zoologist uh, who loves tabletop games and also cosplay. Uh, I find me most of the time on Twitter and most other places. I'm usually Animus Panthera or Animus Thought Panthera. Uh, right now, I'm running a enamel pin Kickstarter. It's really cool. If you like creepy things and carnivorous plants, you should check it out. It's in my pinned tweet. Um, and I love chatting about all kinds of things that I like. So if you ever want to chat about any of those things, hit me up on Twitter. And that's me. Awesome. And that just leaves me. Uh, pretty much all of my games are here. Um, I, I, I don't often get invited other places. I guess people think I'm too busy, but I'm open to invites other people want me to come other places. Uh, for example, next week I'll give a shout out to Little Cup of Joe because I'll be over on her play, her, 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 her play. I'll be over on her channel playing um, a game. Uh, I can't remember the title of it. It's a Kickstarter game. It's an anime Japanese um, style game similar to Ryutama. So I'm all about it. Um, Fine. Oh, I, I, I love them. Kind of. Ryutama is great, by the way. I know. Thomas. I, I want to play this. It's game. amazing. Anything that lets me be that extra, fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, anime is by definition extra. <laughs> I know. It, 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 it just fits so well. Um, if you ever played Made RPG, or if you haven't played Made RPG, you should play it. It's fantastic. I, I feel like I should. I've never played it. I think I've seen it once, but uh, I've not played it. It's fun. Yeah. I've never laughed or smiled so hard. Like after that campaign, my like face hurt. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll have to check it out. Um, yeah, but um, my channel, here are my social links. Go and check them all out. Um, we've got Twitter, we've got Discord, and we've got uh, YouTube. So uh, Discord for community, Twitter if you want a game, send me a DM, and YouTube if you want to catch up on this and all the other series. Um, we're full-time. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, here is our Patreon, uh, where you can buy some free articles and support us if you so wish. We also have some merchandise. Uh, unfortunately, I, I looked it up. The 20% um, the off is now invalid. It ended at midnight. Aww. So unless you're in Pacific time, is 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 it still before? It's we... not midnight yet. You still that. got an hour and forty five minutes. You go still go got go an go hour go. And forty minutes. Head over to Redbubble. Do use, it. Do it. Do it. Use the twenty all day code. I think it's called twenty all day. Go go go. Um, what else have I got? I've got sponsors in the form of typing Bird in the Storm Publishing, uh, who do their merch mainly for charity. Uh, so all their mugs and teespring, the profits go to charity, and um, they will be creating content for us in the new year. Um, we also have Mage Hand Press, and if D and D Five E reskinned in space sounds like your thing, go and check out their free uh, their free uh, review and their pre order material. It's called Dark Matter, and it's a lot of fun. You can see that here on Thursdays at one pm. And next season we'll be doing a season of dark matter as well this time with a um fixed cast and uh another amazing dm in fact one of my favorite dms um but i'm gonna keep that hush 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 hush, hush and leave the veil of mystery over it for now um we don't have a tweet we don't have a competition yet although i do have one more set of dice so i should make another competition i'll make another competition soon um but we are gonna go and do a raid uh, that is the plan right now um so um uh, yeah, get your get your uh, raid cry ready. Uh, as we uh, are going to head over to Geek and Sundry tonight. Um, so warn me when I'm wooing. Let's get in there. Let's hit him with the hype. Uh, keep the hype happening. And um, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Remember, we are here Monday to Thursday, 1 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. And Fridays, 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. every other week. Not this week. I'll, but I will be on Jess's channel this week. So. Anyway. Catch you later, everyone. Until next time, keep on evoking emotions. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.